You're a creative that we've heard about for a while here, right? Let me get to you. Let me just do the introduction. I love process. his intros. He's always gonna like to... hype up, man. Okay, yeah. Yeah, go, yeah. okay, let me just get to this, all right? First of all, we've been trying to book this one for a while, folks. All right? You know, we go back and forth with other people, you know what I mean? Talking see about what's JP, we're like, Yo, yeah. Can you, can you, can you get us a plug in? Let's go. All right? Because we've been looking forward to sitting down with one of the top creatives in Okanagan here. I mean, she may have a first name, she may not. That's her to let you know. But I know her as Wolfette, one of the top stylists and creators in the Okanagan. Let's sing a hand of round of applause for Wolfette. Let's go. Oh my yeah. goodness. <sighs> Thanks so thank much for hanging sisters. out. Yeah, thank you for making some time to come join us. Thank you. Know? you. Yeah. I'm stoked that it's finally aligned because JP is, has been messaging me for like a couple of months and it just hasn't lined up. Yeah. Totally. So you yeah. can see so, that shit, was, it wasn't just a hype logo, that shit's real. Yeah. Right? Um, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, we've been, we've been trying. totally, yeah, we've been excited to yeah. officially meet you and just kind of like get get a little more, dig a little deeper and kind of hang out a little bit, connect yeah. on a deeper level, you know, like yeah. like you were saying, I, we just kind of heard a lot about you, yeah. obviously these days and See even, lot. even with COVID and everything, like, you know, a lot of the people you kind of meet and know is through like online platform right now, so yeah. it's kind of like you can keep tabs on people or even just like meet people without actually meeting them um yeah you so feel like you know them it kind of feels like that you know it kind of yeah. feels You're like following that. along what they're up to yeah, totally. so we've been so we've been following along with what you've been up to but you know what i mean yeah and yeah, I, mean, I don't even know where to start so i mean it's like i know where to start these flowers wow Thank <laughs> you. Yes, true and you guys are on spotify you guys check this out because beautiful, beautiful pink flowers. tulips yep. and a buttload of them um thank you that's so sweet of you i feel like you brought a little bit of a little bit of you to the shop and you know not saying we don't have any pink in the shop but we don't have a lot of pink in the shop and so these are what a beautiful gift Mm. thanks thank you very much yeah of course like i mentioned earlier i was in the floral shop and i'm like trying to decide between white or pink and i actually pulled up your instagram and i was like looking at the shop (laughs) and i'm like will they appreciate pink or like should I just match the shop? I don't know. And then yeah. I looked at my outfit and I was like, it matches my outfit. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. Hey, that's what you're glad you did. <laughs> that was the did. deciding factor. Yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. I'm so excited, but that's how I'd usually start with it. Okay? Totally. It's a shit match because I'll be clashing on the way and if it doesn't. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Well, like we're on video, yeah. so it yeah, yeah. It it's matter. it's a part of the set. Like, I gotta design. walk all the way to the shop. Yeah. And, like, <laughs> you know, like it's like, gonna be seen with these like bouquet of flowers, you know. Like, I'm telling you, she God, just showed her, her true colors, you know. Oh true color. Like that. The reason why is because she brought up set depth. And I, I have a feeling that I don't know if you do think in color or what, but like to see the fact, yeah. <laughs> yeah. When you meet certain creatives, I don't, yeah. I don't, right? Yeah. And when you meet certain creatives, we're actually both colorblind. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, like a little bit. We both like. Well, a lot of men are actually. Actually, it's true because yeah. a lot of men don't see the difference between black and navy. Yeah, black and navy is a tough one. Yeah, wow. uh, we're yeah, terrible. I didn't know that. Yeah, it's yeah. a real thing. Yeah, yeah. Lots of times it's women who see the difference, mm-hmm. and you gotta hold it up. Our, to your... our first blank tee, we had these black tees from Five Eleven, and we thought they were black the whole hold time. On. We're like, we're like, look at these basic black tees; they're perfect. And we probably had so many people being like, Shut yeah, up. they were navy blue. They used to sell me navy. They're yeah. yellow. Yeah, yeah. Like, right. Look like a shyster. You know? Yeah. Are there any other colors that? Um, like I know like even like blues and purples mm-hmm. and just like almost like the, the tones like in between tones like yeah. getting from a blue to purple or navy to black you know like yeah. yellows to greens like some some people like yeah I, the more vibrant they get I think it becomes easier but yeah. a lot of men sense. have like yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot of men have like very minuscule but like well, the, that's the, the, different the, eye, the light intake into the eye I'm guessing yeah well, and I wonder yeah. if that's why a lot of females like, are more inclined to be better, you know, a lot of times can be, you know. But also, like, how does one even conclude that they're colorblind? You don't, like, until someone embarrasses you and tells you this you blank tea that. is not black. Is that someone putting you <laughs> on blast saying, no, that's not black. And then right. they hold it up to the light and then you really straighten, then you actually start to see it and you're like, whoa. Basically enough yeah. people in culture just have to think one thing's navy blue and you think it's black for you to be wrong, I guess. Yeah. But there's also the other thing where <laughs> you're not necessarily colorblind, but everyone sees colors differently, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So. And, and Galileo was actually right when he got burnt at the stake. He said that the... Okay, I'm going too deep. Uh-oh. What? What's that? <laughs> you got me, man. Oh, no. I'm listening. No, no, because you know when you know people say it's like... If, Hundred people say one thing, one person says another thing. That one person is probably that's wrong. what I was trying to get. Yeah, but Galileo exactly. got burnt at the stake for saying that the sun um, 
didn't revolve around the earth, right. and it was yeah. a heretic thing, and he was burnt at the stake, and yeah. then about a couple hundred years later, the church said, actually, you, you were right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But he was dead. He was dead. Yeah. <laughs> So that's a, that's sometimes that one's like, like trying, that's trying to prove like witches are witches by throwing them in the lake and seeing if they can oh, swim. Shit. Yeah, yeah. If you can swim, yeah, that's, that's you're that's a witch. That's some yeah. fucked up shit they said, man. Yeah, no. Um, oh my god. Yeah, yes. Well, that got really off topic yeah. real quick. I like that. Yeah. Just a little bit. That was nice. <laughs> you know, I keep zingers in my pocket yeah. with these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rando fact. Yeah. But, Anyways. Yeah. Back to like, I think we're still like introduction of this. Yeah, thing. that's yeah. crazy. Huh? <laughs> that's how deep it's been, man. I've been holding that stuff for a while, right? Yeah, it's good. Jay, I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. okay. I'm just going to jump into this off talk. Because you said you do think in colors. So my question to you is, you know, since I've seen your work off top, like, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I see you almost as a creative director in a sense. Because it seems like you encapsulate numerous roles in what you do. It seems mm -hmm. like it's set deck. seems like it's props. seems like it's styling. seems like you have numerous crafts that you do. So was there one of them that you started with in the beginning? and then that was your foundation to branch out to the others? Or was it a vision that you had and you had to really learn these disciplines Ooh. to make it happen? Oh, great question. Yeah, no, it just, it started out with fashion. Okay. For yeah. sure, so, yeah. Sweet. So like photo shoots, set decor, mm -hmm. models working with, yeah. makeup artists, uh, who else? Hairstylists, I yeah. guess. Like anyone yeah. that would be on a photo team. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's where everything began for me. Yeah. Yeah, for probably about the first like four or five years. Uh -huh. And then I weaved into the events okay. and the interior design yeah. and all of those other facets. Spatial design. Facets. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Um, I kind of feel like, like the way I see it is like, you know how like, just thinking about like the projects you've done and just kind of doing a little research on, you know, some cool little like dope ass projects you've done, but kind of, you know how like, method actors can just like really like become exactly that role and you have to like <laughs> super dive deep yeah. it feels like you just go all in you know what i mean like it's like you feel like you like you're going for the full vision the full vibe and you just become this like method actor like you almost become like this like method stylist where like i'm in it this is it let's do it let's I crush love that. it i yeah. actually love that you say that and because, so yeah i mean some people will say to me, oh, I, I knew that you did that, or I knew that you did that project because yeah. I could tell that it was, it was your you, work right? or whatever. Yeah, totally. But yeah. I also, like, I really love getting into character with yeah. certain totally. projects that I'm working on. Like, yeah. even with something I've been working on recently with Okanagan Lifestyle, like, yeah. their style is very minimal. It's mm -hmm. neutrals, black, white. So I'll find myself, like, when I go to meetings with Jacqueline, like, mm -hmm. I'm almost always wearing my black trouser pants totally. yeah. and then like yeah. one of their tees or whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's like the same, even with coming here, I'm like, yeah. okay, I'll probably throw on get some denim, denim and like, get a little bit of vintage, vintage tops. Yeah. 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 That's so, like our formula is good denim with vintage tops. Yeah. Like that's like our favorite thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. But so you're a method stylist. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. I, I love, love that you said that. Cause like, <laughs> so dope. I, Paul, it's real talk. That same shit would happen. Like I was ever styling for like a show or something. I'm not lying, it was like episodic and it was like months and months on end. My wardrobe would change. Oh my gosh. Like I did yeah. this one, it was like Netflix, and it was I had to dress a bunch of like triads and like gangsters. Hey, so you know I'm dressed like, you know what I mean? <laughs> triad like a triad. <laughs> and I'm coming to work and they're just like, yo, so do you just want to make them look like you? Yeah. And I was like, I was trying to look like them. Yeah. I was making them look, mm, mm, mm. But it worked. Like you said, it's method. You pour yourself into it to the point that you're so surrounded yeah. that you see the validity in that yeah, style do you know what i mean i'm very much not that way like i like to see things in like an a to z kind of and i think it can inter inter yeah. you know like you can mix with both but i like to see things from a to z and i'm like here these are the steps that need to take place mm. to kind of i'm very like separated from whatever it is like I don't from the subject from the subject and mm. i don't you know find myself in that if anything i don't like to dabble mm. you know dabble too deep into it because i don't want to like get sick of like let's say that style or that color or like i don't want to you know, so I want to be very separated from it. And um, does that allow you to stay more authentic to your style? I think it allows me to keep the vision clear, I think, for, for me. Mm -hmm. Like, I just, like, you know, like, I just, it's almost like that's the focus and that's all that really matters. And, you know, like, I guess you come to the same result where it's like, you know, I'm so focused, I'm in it, and I'm diving deep right. into it. 
whereas like the other version I guess is just kind of being really outside of it but just like prioritizing that subject or that concept I that. Mm. oh I love this version like I just want to be more of a yeah method stylist method yeah, actor it's, it's just, great yeah yeah that's oh. cool. well yeah. it's kind of like you were saying too like outside of work even mm. when I'm not working on the project then I'll start dressing like yeah. that right yeah. and mm-hmm. people cool. will start to make comments mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're like oh like yeah you're wearing you don't really like been wearing many colors lately yeah. or you've been dressing very like this and totally. I'm like oh my god I didn't even notice yeah, yeah. cool and then I start to think about like what I was working on or what kind yeah, of yeah. headspace or yeah. what season it is I mean totally. like everything plays into it yeah 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 but, fun cool. exciting I honestly, and, I, and it makes sense, I guess, like you said, whatever your creative process is, mm-hmm. because, you know, like when I think about it, for me, it's like when you start immersing yourself in certain silhouettes and colors and inspirations nonstop, yeah. you know what I mean? That it's like, I, I have to find the, when I say the validity in it, like find the, the balance in those parameters almost. And then when I kind of find that balance for characters or subjects, Just, you're, you're understanding it. Yeah, the guy that almost relate, and then at a certain point, it's like I almost have to test it out in this weird way. It's like yeah. I have to live it in a sense mm-hmm. to see how it falls and how, it, and it's like okay, yes, yes, mm-hmm. this works together. This is how, it. yeah. Yeah, and so that that's only my process. Like, yeah. Paul and I are very like um, day and night of the same day. Often, if that makes sense, like he can be very. I might jump into and just be a stylist, but he actually sews and and actually designs. With me, I just dress people so it's a whole different thing yeah. for your brain and what you have to systematically approach totally. right yeah yeah so it makes sense you know mm-hmm. in some way yeah <laughs> no that's amazing yeah, yeah, two yeah. different thought processes yeah. but doing totally. a very having a very similar outcome yeah yeah, definitely. yeah. and yeah. even relying sometimes i hitch my outcome and we hit our outcomes are hitched together you know what i mean so his it's just feeding off each other i think like yeah. we we're, oh, we're so blessed cool. we're lucky we definitely like you know you know, we're two sides of the same coin, yeah, where, yeah. you know, marketing and design and like what he brings to the table and what I bring, it definitely just like made gray hearts, you know, it, it's a hundred percent what it is, yeah. you know, we like, I couldn't do it without Sean. And, you know, and vice yeah. versa, it doesn't yeah, even yeah. exist, right? Yeah. 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 Not everyone gets yeah. that though, like, so. so I'm sure we're, we're like, you do, yeah. like, you gotta, you work with some people yeah. on the team. Do you I feel like you got yeah. teams, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. It's like ever evolving cool. though, it's kind of yeah. like the cool part and also like a bit of the stressful part, I guess, yeah. I would yeah. say, like, it's just, even going from fashion to events to interior design, it's like mm. the type of people that I would work with in all of those different realms mm-hmm. vary so drastically. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah. It also depends like who you need for what projects, you know? Like, exactly. If you're doing an event opposed to just like, you know, like a shoot or something yeah. like that. Yeah, like, like working with things. BNA versus doing like a brand shoot for whomever, mm-hmm. maybe mm-hmm. something really colorful and rainbow. Yeah. Like, yeah. Or, or Hotel Z is one that comes to mind. Like working cool. with Hotel Z versus working with BNA is yeah. two different like, ways. Yeah. I'm going to get different people involved for it. Totally. Mm-hmm. Fair and enough. it's the same with like anything for photo shoots, events. Yeah. yeah. So you got like mercenaries, you got like haters on deck. Like, is that, is that how it is? Because I mean, it sounds very, when I listen to you talk, like obviously you do events and stuff, but I really relate to it from a film side in a sense from the production side and someone who's being like a head designer calling who they need to fill certain roles mm-hmm. for a production or a job. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so and that's why it's, it's crazy to hear you say that you do props, set deck and costuming because it's just, there's people who immerse their whole lives just to try to do one. Totally. You know what I mean? most, people, no, most people specialize in one of those things, you know? Right. Like, Me included. Yeah, whether yeah, it's yeah. film or yeah. events coordinating or whatever, yeah. like most people usually like, so like I do events and coordinate yeah. events or like I do set decks and build you know props and you, yeah. you seem to kind of like again because you yeah, have that whole vision it. that whole thing like yeah. and you're just like yeah. I kind of have to wear a few different hats yeah. to actually make this oh happen gosh. you know like so well that's the thing, that's the thing is thing. like yeah. you kind of just need to fill gaps it's almost like you have to yeah needed. so is that a necessity I'm sometimes? definitely mm. like better at certain things than I am so than what's others. your favorite yeah, like, do yeah. you have a favorite hat to wear um, well, creative director really resonated yeah. with me. Like yeah. in my dream scenario, I would be directing and I would have like a little bit just of calling the shots like, and yeah. but not even the... just like calling the shots. I, d- I still yeah. like to be really involved, totally. but actually working with someone else on it, mm-hmm. I work really well yeah. Yeah, yeah. like that. Yeah. Having yeah. someone to like bounce ideas off of and that, totally. you know, maybe has more knowledge than me in mm-hmm. one particular area. Yeah. Like even when it comes to set design, it's like, Okay, well, I'm not a carpenter, yeah, 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 yeah. but like I've figured out how to use a drill and like mm-hmm. get a hammer and nails, yeah, and yeah. I own all the tools. Yeah. <laughs> I watch YouTube videos. Make but... it work, yeah. <laughs> make it work from there, yeah. Yeah, right? but 
you know, certain project it calls for a little bit more of a skill set than yeah. maybe I would have. So yeah, totally. it's amazing to like work with other people. Well, and a little will get you a long way too. Like if like I think a lot of it's just like ambition and motivation. You know, like if you have that, like you said, like you can jump on YouTube or like you can like there's like do it yourself or anything and everything. You know, so it's like <laughs> yeah. and then you can put your own little flair on it. You know, so a lot of mm -hmm. it's just like you know how bad do you want it or like you know like. If, Hundred percent. You're gonna make it happen, you know. Like and I tell people that yeah. when they like approach me about like, oh, I was thinking about like starting, you know, to sew, or you know, I was thinking about going to school for fashion, all this. Mm -hmm. I was like, honestly, just buy a dinky sewing machine and yeah. just start doing just something. Do I was like, yeah. I don't even recommend fashion school unless you have to, or it's like, That's you know, it's like, yeah. and and things have obviously changed since like we went to school, you know. We're, but what you're saying, I don't think has. Yeah, I think because yeah. dude, that was the exact steps that I did. I remember I tell my mom I'm in university. I'm for something completely different, poli sci, and I'm sitting there. I'm trying to design little collections and stuff. And so my mom thinks she's gonna help me. out. shut up, mom. Love you. You know what I mean? <laughs> and she come bring me a, a sewing machine, and she's like, "So you want to sew? My mom can sew and all that. You know what I mean? And she's like, "If you want to sew and make clothes, this is," and I. Just like you said, I started sitting down at this thing. I started trying to do things with it. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, I really quickly realized, like, you know what my role in this whole thing is? Is to pay other people to sew. <laughs> yeah. This is not my totally. position. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like, and that's the thing is that I had to realize, you know, the difference between, a, as you say, creative director is not the same as a fashion designer. And I didn't know that at that time. I had no clue about these things. Like we learn yeah. so much when we get into industry, yeah. that all the different hats mm -hmm. that are truly being worn, right? Where mm -hmm. then you can really appreciate when someone's doing so much because you're like, holy shit, what you're doing, I often see breaking down into how many people, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And for me, I know I just couldn't do that. So when he says that, I'm like, yeah, you're right. As soon as I started sewing, I knew it wasn't my place. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, totally. It doesn't mean fashion's not your place. No, it just no. means yeah. your, your place in fashion isn't behind the machine. Yeah, you know a big I mean? part of like, you know, creative that director, machine, yeah. Yeah, creative director, or even just a leadership role yeah. in general, like it's not always so much like, ideally you don't have to do a lot, you just have to know how to do mm. a lot. You know what I mean? And also like, know who knows how to do it. Totally, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? And like, Ideally, you're not yeah. doing that much. Another you know? thing is also pairing the right team together yes. because team not building. only That's so much, yeah. Yeah, yeah, not even so much like who is going to be the best for the project, but no. who collectively yes. yeah. is going to be the best for the project. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So yeah. there's so many this, this weird, person might be like, like the best at this, but like, yeah, but they don't then, get along with anyone. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So they can't do the event. Yeah. Like the yeah. best person for makeup might not get along with the best person for hair, you know. So yeah. you might have to compromise on one. You might not have the who's... same vibe, or yeah. like, you know, just yeah. not on the same way. Yeah. 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 There's so much to take into account for sure. We'll save that question for later. But uh, but uh, yeah, I know you got some of those, those, those questions. Um, oh, right. I was gonna ask, um, just talking about like projects and different things, and you know, like, is there any like projects in the past years that really like stood out to you, or like anything that's like you're like, if that was like your resume, be like, this is the one I want you to see first. Mm. Like, is there something uh, that you're really proud of? I know you have a handful. Like, I know. mean, it depends who I was showing that resume true, to. True, that's true. If you're showing it to us, <laughs> well, not that we did. If we were trying to hire you for a gig and we were like, can we see your portfolio? And not that it works? needs to mesh with our style, no, but just, yeah. just what would you something show us? like you. Well, as I mentioned earlier, I don't really do much men's stuff. Yeah. I yeah. tend to like shy away from it. Yeah. Just because when we were talking about the method acting thing, it's yeah. like I often will throw on clothing to see how it falls, to see how it fits for the girls before they put it on. Like mm -hmm. even if we're not the same size, like yeah. you'll still get a feel yeah. for like. You wanna handle something how it drapes all. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So with not being able to do that with being a female, like yeah. I just typically just try not to take on that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. Having said that, um, I did go to LA for a project. So you knew you had something. With <laughs> um, Jordan Powers. Shout and out Jordan Powers. Jordan Powers in yes. the house. Yeah. Like Aaron De Silva, who I know you guys have had, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like Jordan Ambrosio, yeah. um, Ambrosio the, the, yeah, the, the whole family, family yeah, the whole Ambrosio yeah. family. I'm not sure if you guys have heard anything really about that trip. It was a couple years ago now. Well, I mean, I, I, like knowing uh, nothing that no, I wouldn't no, want to hear again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I, know, I haven't heard a lot. <laughs> I know the project now that you say it. Yeah, like, yeah. yeah. Read and all that. That yeah, exactly. That's all yeah. we kind of heard. So yeah, that was a really cool one. That was like when I like I think I just moved to just moved to Kelowna at that point, and I met 
Jordan was like one of the first, Jordan and Mark were like one of the first people I met at BNA. Um, like before I even started working anything, I just like was showing up to BNA every day and just like that, that was like the bartender in me and just like finding the best spot in town yeah. and just kind of getting to know like the right people. Um, but then they were telling me and Jordan's like, yeah, my brother's like in this group and like we're kind of like a thing. We're actually going to LA in like two weeks. I'm doing that. So it's like, that was like my first, that, that was the exact time when I like first just moved to Kelowna. I didn't know, I didn't know one human being, but they were telling, I'm like, these guys are cool. In Kelowna. Yeah, exactly. In Kelowna. <laughs> in Kelowna. Yeah, yeah. I, um, I, know, I, I know. barely yeah. count. I barely count as a human sometimes. That's yeah. Really true. Well, in Kelowna, you know, <laughs> we're here. Um, but it was just, I just started hearing about like what these guys were up to, and I was like, oh, I didn't actually know Kelowna had that much like a culture, a vibe, mm. and all this. And then I like, I was like, these guys are. I'm like, I kind of want to. Like, I feel like it's new inside. I'm like, I'm gonna get to know these people a little more. You know, like I just kind of had a feeling. So you heard a little something about this trip. I you want to flesh out the bones on this? Yeah, so, I yeah. mean, we all went down, like, Rare Breed was a group, it was two guys, or, sorry, three guys, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. two rappers, mm -hmm. yeah. and um, they got signed with a couple people in LA, so, um, who Aaron and I had connections with, so we mm -hmm. actually ended up going down to LA as a group of us, there was like 10 of us, and we rented a house, sure. and, but, I mean, other than it being an amazing trip and so fun with so yeah. many great people yeah. from Kelowna, yeah. um, we shot like a really cool music video so that's yeah. like one of the things I that i it. It just love so much yeah. and it was kind of the end of it's hard to say the end of my era in la but like kind mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. that was the end of going back and forth there so much yeah. because there were a number of years where aaron de silva and i we yeah. were going back and forth and we like wanted to move there and we were yeah. spending a lot of time we were getting to know a lot of people right um so it's yeah Fairly it was kind of like a monumental it, yeah. Yeah project mm. i suppose mm. cool. and if i were to present something yeah that sounds you guys, like it was because yeah. i, style, I, well, badass, yeah. I kind of styled the dudes for it i like <laughs> lined up the shops that we yeah. pulled clothing from and like styled all the girls for it and mm. all the locations oh that's a, that's a huge job you didn't take of numerous departments like locations yeah, styling like, like, yeah. again these are specific people like locations is that's like, like careers those are like careers that yeah. some people just have to do that like they just find the shops so like oh you know i styled some of the people found the location and stuff like yeah. 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 yeah like that's crazy that's there's nice. yeah yeah driving around in the desert like yeah jordan having some like youtube video pulled up like i think the the people said it's over here and we're like driving around and then we're like shit it's getting really late like holy crap we still gotta finish the girls makeup and like just rallying mm. everyone to like okay mm. we're ready oh. let's go yeah and we started shooting and there's like numerous vlogs from this trip too okay. which oh, yeah. is so epic okay. um but like we finally started shooting for probably like 30 minutes and then the sun started going down oh Perfect. So then we're like running and chasing the sun because like, oh, that's awesome. over there, yeah. it's good. So we're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then this car we rented got stuck in the sand <laughs> and like, it was just, and just... we're trying to get like the girls to drive it, but like they can't actually drive it. So like <laughs> wow. Aaron hops in, it's like, oh man. That's well, I'm gonna have to check out these vlogs here. Yeah. 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 I saw yeah. the music yeah. video. Okay, yeah, yeah. 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 Now that we know some of what really happened behind the scenes, mm -hmm. you know, that behind the scenes yeah. action. And I guess that is a cool one to mention That's too because cool. so many people in Kelowna are involved Part in that. It. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah like, we know more than half of them. So what's the like, corridor yeah. like between, you said you were going back and forth from here to yeah, LA what was up with LA? Yeah. Um, well, this is something I was going to mention earlier. I forget if it was Sean or Paul that said this. I'm not. We're one of the same. Same um, thing. <laughs> Sean or Paul. You were talking about how when you, yes, you were talking about fashion school and how when you went in, you were like all or nothing, yeah. just head down, nothing yeah, else mattered. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I really resonate with that because when I really started first getting into photo shoots, it was like I was working at Earl's at the time mm -hmm. and that was very much like party lifestyle and I was just like nope I don't drink I was 19 I just started focusing on doing my photo shoots fashion stuff totally. worked there two nights a week and the goal was to move to New York or LA yeah. Yeah. and to be in that industry be the jam. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah and um, I ended up meeting Aaron and Aaron and I were together for about five or six years mm -hmm. and he has family down in LA so we started going down and staying with them mm. cool and then we just kind of made it a constant because we started meeting people and we we're like if we want to move here like we need to like yeah, get our foot in the network, door right? and yeah, yeah. yeah and so we just started collaborating with a bunch of different like photographers models whoever like it was so dope and yeah. it's just like 
it's really cool once you immerse yourself into that realm, how quickly things can happen for you. Yeah. yeah. And like how inspiring it is, but also like how much that takes a toll on well, yeah. like how intensive it the is. Lifestyle, fast life. Yeah. 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 So that went on for about two years of like going back and forth there. Yeah. And yeah, we did some like work stuff where brands from Kelowna would like pay us and we'd go shoot in LA because we were kind of like going anyways. And yeah. We're like, yeah. we can shoot in LA for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. That's yeah. Cool. But that, uh, that obviously, you know, like everything has its time and place and everything. Yeah. But I was going to say like that probably and obviously like really has molded a bit of like who you've become in terms of like aesthetic or style or you know yeah. like i'm sure you you've grind. like pulled yeah. i'm sure you pulled a lot of that la life and kind of brought back little bits of that clona and kind of like yes. use it you know like well, how mean, has yes, it affected how has it affected it's you? kind of funny because naturally i was just drawn to la because you know like la wasn't a city necessarily that i had sought out and been like that's mm -hmm. hollywood that's yeah. where i want to be mm -hmm. it was more so the niche that I was into and like the it super kind of fell colorful, in line already. yeah, yeah. yeah mm -hmm. all the people that I started connecting with over social media mm -hmm. just ended up being based in LA. Yeah, yeah. So that was the thing that led me to totally. Okay, LA is the yeah. spot for me. You, you, That's you where all my people are. Totally. It's that West Coast corridor, Vancouver, LA, Okanagan. Like it's. I've, I've heard you. I've heard you lived in a few yeah. cities though, or you've you've had the opportunity to like travel a lot and kind of like yeah. Eat. So where else have you? Was there anywhere you lived or were based on it? I lived in Vancouver for like a very, very short while. I shouldn't oh, even yeah. say that I lived in Vancouver, actually. <laughs> no, never mind. Uh, <laughs> that, on the record. Like, we're we're going to start grilling. Don't worry. I do we need lived to stop in Vancouver. Yeah, no. um, yeah, no, that's all good. That was the first place I lived. I think most people have lived in Vancouver. That was the first place I lived. Yeah. Yeah. That was the first place I lived. Yeah. It's that a very was, transient city. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of people yeah. are yeah. from there or yeah. actually live there for a long time. Actually born there. You know how it is. But So that's the first place you moved to? Yes. Because you're Kelowna based? Yeah. Yeah. So I grew up in Kelowna. Yeah. I I like I lived in a few different countries growing up. Cool. So that's kind of like another topic, but mm -hmm. um, which ones? Um, <laughs> I lived in I South stuff. Africa, mm. Costa Rica, and Mexico. Jeez, look, just a couple, yeah. 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 Okay. So oh, yeah. that was dope, and definitely yeah. plays a part in like those. shaping who totally. I am and yeah. my perspective and culture in general yeah yeah yeah, yeah absolutely yeah. is there anyone that you feel where where jay wolfett just wolfett is right now is there any one of those or are they all a blender is there anything that you're feeling really resonating with your aesthetic and your vibe right now is there something that you can kind of place to one of those spots or something that you're really feeling in your vibe probably not aesthetically mm -hmm. i don't think but like my soul and everything is just so drawn to like tropical mm, I was gonna say Costa Rica forest. is it? Like yeah, oh, Costa Rica yeah. was my oh. favorite. I love Costa Rica. So yeah. I'm always just like dreaming of beaches yeah. and like yeah. every winter in Kelowna. I'm like what? You're like what? Yeah. Like, yeah. This is every the last winter. winter. Yeah. <laughs> this is the last one yeah. for like fifteen no. years now. Yeah, that. fair enough. This is like my Costa Rica from Alberta, I feel like. <laughs> Kelowna is your Costa Rica from Alberta, yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, it's, yeah like, it's just so much better here, it's yeah, just, yeah. 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 It's already tropical compared well, to Alberta, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, that's a big difference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I can only really imagine what the real, yeah. the real things like. Yeah, it's pretty nice. <laughs> but yeah, no, Vancouver was the first place I moved, though. Okay, okay. And I was there for two months. Two months? Oh, yeah. I know yeah. people who's I know people who stay was shorter than that. Mm -hmm. so, really? Oh, Vancouver. I, and yeah. they like full on moved there. Uh, they were, they're, they're gone, man. I moved. I moved. I moved oh, with a buddy. Um, shout out to you. Um, from Medicine Hat, Alberta, to Vancouver, yeah. and he was gone within like a month. Like we moved up together, yeah. and we brought up all our shit, like in like my Volkswagen Golf, like at that time, and just like everything we had did there, found an apartment, and then, yeah, he was gone like a month, couldn't hack it. Vancouver's yeah. not an easy spot, it's not man. easy, Especially, man. Swallow people whole. Oh, oh man, I moved there in 2007 when the, the recession was just hitting. Oh, it was tough yeah. living, boy. Yeah. You like, yeah. your rent went like this, your earnings went like this, and mm -hmm. man, I don't yeah. blame people for not sticking around. Two plus That's jobs, Oh, you my know, gosh, right? You're thinking about going to school, or like getting a career. Oh, yeah. my God, it's oh, the reason why we're all in Kelowna yeah. right now. But, Vancouver definitely. Yeah, that's a, a special, big, special place in my heart for yeah, sure. I wouldn't have met this guy 
if it's it wasn't true. for that. You it's know what true. I mean? Like, I couldn't have done yeah. the things yeah. that I did without going there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's interesting yeah. to hear the other people's places and the places that were really instrumental in them getting to where they are. You know yes. what I mean? Because I know everything technically is like, well, every place is... Yes, technically <laughs> you had to go to every place. But there's right. certain places that really impact you mm -hmm. more so than others. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool to hear what yours are, you know? How long were you guys in Vancouver for? Um, I was there for maybe like seven years, I think, ish. You were there for quite a bit longer. I was there for 12 years. Yeah. A little, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we were there, yeah, yeah. Pretty, pretty young until kind of like that. There was definitely that like 20s, you know. Were you left after you, when you finished school and he was doing things and he was doing his own hustle, but fashion took him to Europe. I mean, I'll let him speak for himself, but he ended mm -hmm. up interning and going to Sweden and working in fashion which was super cool for me to see one of my homies in the same industry go out there doing something cool with big brands overseas, you know what I mean? And so that's the dream almost as a fashion student, you're sitting there going, opening these doors, you know what I mean? So seeing mm -hmm. Polly do that yeah. was super dope. And a lot of people leave Vancouver for fashion because you know, as it's, and that's the problem with that, I won't say problem, the challenge for that city is mm. that you get a lot of talented people who then go to other markets like New York or right. LA. It's not sustainable for fashion, like lifestyle yeah. or career, you know, after mm -hmm. you actually, there's a lot of great it's schools, the foundation there's a lot of good, yeah. yeah. It's a stepping stone. That's what yeah. it is, for the talent fashion. leaves, yeah. which in some ways is a great opportunity for the talent yeah. who decides to stay, but it also can be a deterrent mm -hmm. because you feel like who, who's staying here, you follow the other you people's footsteps and you're like, why is everyone who's good go? Mm -hmm. Or for me, it was like, I kind of felt that to a certain extent, but then I went into film. And that's what kept me in Vancouver was the film industry and right. getting to style and film. So I got to combine Which fashion. Which was obviously thriving. And film area. was thriving. Yeah. And that's the yeah. tough thing to find an industry that was thriving in Vancouver to meet the cost in your of field. living yeah. in your field. Yeah, yeah. So that's what got me there for a while was mm -hmm. getting wrapped up in film. Was it was cool because that's like just before I was leaving, like that's when we were actually getting the most tightest. Like yeah. we were like hanging out often. We were doing like things and and then I had to bounce, but we always kind of just kept in touch. I always, always saw like, this guy to yeah, work. Like, Dude, what are you like, doing, man? Team, <laughs> like, all that, yeah. I knew he was the missing half. Though. So, I like, knew so I knew moving, it. moving back to Canada wasn't <laughs> like, you know, the intention wasn't like, hey, Sean, like let's, you know, like it wasn't us. That was never in the play. And then it just so happened that I wasn't going to move back to Vancouver. And we had some family out in uh, like Osoyoos. So just moved to Kelowna and thought that might be the next step and just oh. to try it out and we had to leave Sweden pretty like abruptly um so when coming you say we? You so, what do you mean? uh me and my fiance uh, oh okay yeah Tanya and I um shout out Tanya shout out Tanya yeah <laughs> shout out Kara I told you I could be yeah shout out Tanya whenever she gets to this episode she's still like three behind yeah um but um <laughs> anyways yeah we moved out there we lived out there we had almost like a full life um where we <laughs> just checking <laughs> she's got tons of kombucha oh Shout out. Shout out Mother Love Kombucha for all, Kambucha. look at all the colors. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. So Which yeah, color China are you going to pick there? What, are you up to there? what color is that? What color do you think? <laughs> black. Oh, damn. I think that was a color black burn. Black? Oh, I set myself up for that one. I think that's been that guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so like, what that's color like, is that? Is that lavender on it? It's got to be, yeah, that's it. like purple. That's like a Jeez. violet to me. Oh, God, and guys, that's black. Is that violet? I would choose purple. Yeah, yeah. Well, I was figuring by the t-shirt, I put the purple next to it. Oh, is that t-shirt purple? Oh my gosh. Wow. <laughs> oh my gosh. Are we wearing the same t-shirt? <laughs> no, you kind of have like me chirping out now though no. because I recently painted my living room yeah. and no is now. <laughs> everyone who walked in was like, oh, it's it's yellow. And I'm like, no, it's green. And they're like, well, that's a big they're like no, that's like a Damn. mustard. And I'm like, no, that's a green. That's so like is it like a pea soup family. green? So who, who's right? Yes. It's yeah. a pea soup green in it. Yeah. 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 But it's not mustard. No, that's, not that's a whole other food group. This yeah. is mustard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, this isn't that gold mustard. Were they, yeah. Yeah. Were they guys? No, it was no. multiple people. They okay. referred to it as mustard. Mm. So they dig a little deeper into this. Yeah. Like, I want to see gosh. this wall. And I'll tell you. Yeah. You have to bring it off top. I ended up going with a different color, actually. Oh, okay. it's gone. Yeah. yeah, it's non existent okay. anymore. Yeah. What'd you go with? Yeah. Forest moss. Oh, forest moss. So okay. it's more green. More yeah, green. Yeah, yeah. Okay. There wouldn't be any more. So there wouldn't be more confusion. Yeah. 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 Everyone would get it right. Exactly. Um, yeah. Uh, Sorry, I cut you off. Not at all. Oh, man, that's how we do it. That's podcast. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 please. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, yeah. I know we're probably going to take a little break. I was going to say, I think that might be a good time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I had a question. I'm going to wait till we get back from the break. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah but, um, next segment. No, this will get changed, though. <laughs> we're all fashionable. Like, Look at Jade. Yeah, wardrobe segment. changes. Of course, yeah, yeah. Costume department. Let's go. I think Jade might be onto a, a a change. 
Yes, I'm down. Let's do it. Change I want to see, see Jay style herself from the shop. I want to see her just put together a dope look from yeah. the shop. Yeah. And we'll be back and we'll look better. Let's go. <laughs> But we'll get to them. Shout out Rico. Shout out Rico for the beautiful rosé. Yes, sir. Jose Rosé. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and then, uh, I think I think we're back. I, you know what? I don't think we cheers on the first segment. Cheers. So it's a little so, tradition we do around here. Hang on, hang on. Before we cheers, oh, we gotta shouts. we gotta propose a cheers. Oh, okay. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna propose a cheers to. I, I don't. To stripes. <laughs> Stripes. stripes. We're all wearing stripes. Yes, we are. Yeah. Cheers. We're, all, we're all earning them. Mm, mm, and earning them. Mm -hmm. There you go. Polly. Oh, shit, I didn't do that cheers right. Are you supposed to hit the table first? Oh, hey, we just, you know. I don't know. Like, I, Where are you from? You yeah. Know, regional yeah, Stilo. Okay. You know, what are you? It's definitely an Alberta thing. Yeah, I think it's a bit of a Alberta thing. Yeah, yeah it's okay. Yeah, no. just means you haven't lived in Alberta. Poor you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> but. Okay. I'm going to pick up where we left off. Okay. We were kind of talking about, if I recall correctly, I think it had a little something to do. There's props. There was recall correctly? Like, everyone, like, watching this is going to be like, dude, it's been a minute. But for us, it's been, like, close to, like, 45 minutes. I yeah. mean, do you think we got changed looking all super fly like this in a minute? Yeah. It's been yeah. a second, yeah. all right? Shout out to the costume change. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to everyone who designed their own wardrobe today. You know what I mean? <laughs> but we had, actually, some questions submitted for you. Don't be looking. Submitted for you from viewers, <laughs> all right? It's trying to, try I'm to, nervous. Trying to all right, I know, yeah. the first one's gonna be a real gotcha one. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready? I think we we trickled it down one? to maybe three, right? No, nope, no, nope. it's another one. Yeah. I think it's actually a really good question. Yeah. Um, we had one of our viewers ask, Jade, what was your first big prop purchase? Ooh, good one, isn't it? Um, it was. Okay, so can it be like it wasn't it wasn't actually a purchase, perhaps, but it was like the first big prop. Don't snitch on yourself. I wanna hear so, about that, yeah. yeah. It was, <laughs> yeah, I it wanna was hear about that. Something we attained for free somehow. Mm. A very, very, very long time ago. Mm. Many moons Statue ago. Many moons, yeah. Is yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you you acquired it. Yeah. Yes. It was so a bouncy was castle. A bounty wow. castle? It was a bounty castle. A whole castle. bounty castle. Yeah. Was it inflated already? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, shit. You had to do no. all the work. Okay. Yeah. Um, so it what fit in you... the back of the truck, so. Wow. Nice. So what did, you, what, did, what did you do with it? Yeah. Did you use um, it? Like on a, do you yeah. still have I, it? I like brought it to, like this was in high school. <laughs> wow, so you've been doing this for <laughs> so, a second. Yeah. Kind of actually, which Jeez. is, yeah, which is pretty funny yeah, yeah. to reference back to because no obviously like getting into events and rentals and mm -hmm. that whole realm. It's funny to reference back to high school, yes, <laughs> to some of the stuff that I was doing. So what were you doing in high school and with the bouncy castle? I was mostly just bringing it to parties. Oh, it was the most okay. popular kid in school. Promotions. Like, like, Jesus. Events and promotions. <laughs> promotions. That's what you were doing, huh? So I'm probably I making it sound like... bringing a 40 like... to make me popular. But... <laughs> <laughs> you should have brought a 40 to bouncy castle. Yeah. Dude, I am probably making cool it sound like yeah. a little bit more cool than it was, though. Because it was it a kid's bouncy castle. Like, it wasn't like a... What do you mean a kid's What size? Are we talking... Are we talking... Are we talking is that stories? Like, um, what talking what's about? a kid's bouncy castle? Is there like an adult? A 10 by 10. It was good. But you couldn't know there was like an like, adult bouncy castle that you like. Oh, like, well, like, there are. There are. Yeah. Damn, man. There's a whole. Yeah, world. Okay. So yeah. you just had the little kids bouncy castle. So it was like a little. Yeah. That's pretty really cool. Well, you could get like three of us going in it at once before it like cool. really like wanted to deflate. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that was the first big prop. Okay. For Boom. sure. Y'all heard it here. First big prop acquirement was bouncy castle. So, so in St. Madden, <laughs> obviously there's some roots and origins in that, but like, um, how long have you been at it? Like in terms of, you know, doing events, styling, fashion, you know, like, would you say, or your first, like, whether your yeah. first gig or your first project, or your first kind of like, you know, I was, I think I was about 18 when I first started doing 
photo shoots and yeah. planning yeah. them. Mm-hmm. My mom did photography. Oh, so it, okay. Like, now we're getting into this. Mom yeah. was a photographer. Yes. Okay. So it started out as like going on road trips to cool little towns and planning these like little photo shoots where I'd I'd thrift a bunch of props or like go to garage sales and find all these cool props and then I'd bring them all in the car. So you've been doing this. This is like sheds a whole new light to me. It's like you've been doing this since school. Yeah. You're like, it's like his mom actually has a, she's a tailor and a designer and does all that too. He's Mm -hmm. generations in. So you're generations into this. I kind of, yeah, at least it fell into your lap in that sense. Like you got to see yeah. things from a, yeah. a perspective, yeah. though, people who are just starting Read it. Yeah. wouldn't see. Like, you're seeing your mom showing you things. You're thinking about how to make pictures balanced, how to, you yeah, know. Yeah, totally. It was, it was more of a hobby for her. Like, it's not okay. something that she did as a profession. So it's not on the level of, you know, maybe photographers that I would be working with now. Mm. Yeah, yeah. But... You, it was, got, you got introduced to it yeah, at a young age totally. like, you know, like not a lot of people have like this like childhood of like, hey, my hobby's going to garage sales and like setting well, up photo shoots, shoots, you know, like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I guess so, yeah, totally, so, right. yeah. Guess, totally yes. yeah, but that plays into it a bit, yeah. you know, where it's like you, you start to have a little bit of like a taste or an eye for it. Yes. Um, yeah, cool. And another yeah. funny thing about the bouncy castle too is that I started renting it out. Like in the summertime, Damn. I was like, Look I was like, you. I should rent this awesome. out. And what else did I rent out? Mm-hmm. Oh man, <sighs> random shit. Hustling at a young so age. So it's funny to come back to yeah. this now. Bought rental house at a young age. Mm-hmm. You were destined <laughs> yeah. for this. And now you're kind of looking at a little bit of that world, right? Where it's yeah. Like, yeah. So it's funny that that's yeah. what you're doing at a young age. Yeah. Yes. Hmm. So. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Funny yeah. little yeah. moments. To yeah, you think about your childhood, too. and you think about the seeds that were planted, and mm-hmm. where they bring you to. Because you know, what? I can say, funny, my mom would have me like. You should ask me what earrings do I'm supposed to wear. And ask me things as a little kid, you know what I mean? I'd be like seven years old. I'd be like, mm-hmm. Mom, don't wear those earrings. Those don't look good with those shoes. Yeah, yeah. Mom, that is. And so when I think about it, you know, you don't I realize like, how much of that actually yeah. takes and, like, you know, yeah. plays into yeah. like, you know, like the, yeah. only child with the, you know, grow up with my mom. My totally. mom would like, before she'd go out, you know what I mean? Like, Sean, what do you think about Sean? We're red or blue? Uh-huh. And I would take this shit real serious. Yeah. Like, like hmm. Go put the blue one back on. Yeah, yeah. Okay, put one, the red one, one back more on. One more time. Yeah, do one more change. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And it was real serious. And That's I look cool. at where I am now, yeah. and it was, the seeds were planted a long time ago. Oh, so dude. hearing that yeah. is interesting. As you guys say that I can specifically remember times, and I mean, I know this stuff, like, about myself, but, like, luckily, like, I mean, I've been, like, yeah, again, like, fourth generation, like, tailor and, you know, working with machines and everything. Um, but I just remember, like, when I was a kid and my mom you know, she would go to the fabric store like weekly because she would have to like work with clients and she would make like wedding dresses and all this stuff. So she was oh. just there all the time. Yes. Um, but um, so she's crazy talented, but um, I'd go Shout with her to Patricia. The, Patricia. Yeah, yeah. In the house. Great yeah. Name. yeah. yeah. Um, Mama so Riss. She's, she's a dream. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, so I would go with her to the fabric store mm-hmm. and you know, like it could be to some kids like super boring, like going with your mom to run errands to the fabric store and she's just like, you know, bringing me with her. But Instead, she would make it fun for me, and she'd be like, "Okay, like go pick out a fabric, and we'll make you like some pajama pants and like mm. a sweat, oh. like a, a whole suit." Yeah. So I was already like fabric sourcing. I was already like choosing things. Wow. So yeah. we would go, and I'd pick out like you know some cool little like cotton quilt, like whatever you know, and yeah, just like, know. Some, like, some, some dinos, yeah. like, some, some soccer balls or whatever you know, and just like <laughs> you know pick out this like cute little fleece or something, and we'd go home. And like that week, she would make. I can see your little ass with some little PJs. soccer ball fleeces. Yeah, I, yeah, I remember. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Matching yeah. Top. yeah. Fucking around. adorable, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we. <laughs> I was cool. Uh, fucking it was, adorable. It was, yeah. Sorry, I'd have like a new. I, it's like I, I wish I could flex this stuff in like school because like yeah. I, you know it was my PJ set, so it's like I wasn't wearing it to like you know. School. You went quite Hugh But if everyone PJ knew game. how yeah. cool and how extensive my PJ line was, it was like, you know, <laughs> it was heavy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I remember, like, you know, for like my birthday one year, she made me like a Power Ranger suit, like the black Power Ranger suit with the full thing. He chose the black one, like, folks. Oh, yeah. Either he has <laughs> colorblind issues <laughs> oh, or he knows what time it is. <laughs> yeah. but, but, you were actually the Blue Ranger, bro. <laughs> so, um, so it's funny when Noah, Noah, our buddy Noah, obviously was here a little earlier and he was like, we were talking about inspiration. Yeah. Um, so it's just funny to think about because I keep thinking, like I was telling him like a lot of my inspiration comes from fabric first. Like mm. I need to see it and feel yes. it. And then when I see it, feel it, color, 
all of that, I'm just like, oh, I know what I want to make out of this. Like, that's where it starts. Touches are very much a touch. The touch. Like, it's like, oh, man. And I, yeah. and I learned this from my mom, but when we were at the fabric store, I'd literally just, like, hit the aisles. And I, I mean, I don't know if you're allowed to do this in COVID time, but I would just, like, touch everything that I was walking No, dude, by. you're not allowed to do that. Yeah, yeah, times. yeah. But I, I, I just, like, and when I'm at the fabric store, I literally, as I'm just, like, looking and seeing things, my other hand is just touching and stuff. Mm. And sometimes it just, like, stops. And I'm like, oh, you know, What's like, so, like, my eyes are doing one thing and my hands are doing another. You know, mm. but like I see things and when those and then when I touch it and I feel it and I see it, and I'm like, oh, I know what this is going to be, mm. you know, and it's like, but again, like that started at a very young age where I was at the mm-hmm. fabric store, see my mom touch stuff and then her allowing me to like choose my own, you know, fabric mm. and design but, yeah. and stuff, you know, so it's, you know, a lot of that really. And I mean, I was like six, seven, eight, nine till I was like, you know, 12. Mm. I mean, don't get me wrong. She still makes me some PJs sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Little cute uh, ones yeah. too, and he's still fucking yeah, adorable. Yeah, still yeah. Ones, yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, inspiration. That's yeah. Well, uh, quick question. I was thinking when I heard you guys talking about that, made me think. You know, you know, once in a while, and I was like, okay, you said you think in colors, right? Or you yeah. you create in colors a bit, or yeah, resonates? colors and textures. And textures. So then much. I guess my question is, do you think that? Is that also indicative of your learning process? Are you a very visual learner? Are you a very Mm -hmm. hands-on learner? Do these things correspond with how you create? Just curious, because, yeah, Yeah. is it? Because me, I'm not really one of the other of those things. When I hear these things, it blows me away. I'm very much like, I have to hear things, and I remember what I hear, you know what I mean? But I'm not a a singer, maybe I like to talk or something, I don't know. But other than that, it hasn't really affected my career so much like that. Just more mm-hmm. my information retention. Right. So is that how you guys retain information is more visually and you more tactically or tactfully, I guess would be the term? Yeah. I mean, I don't know. For me, I guess it's uh, I guess almost the same as you. Like, it's neither one or the other. Mm. I think they all play a part. For me, it's like the question of like, what got me to the fabric store to begin with, mm. you know? Or is like, it watching mom? Yeah. Or like, or like, why am I there? You know, for me, it's a lot more intentional, I think. Um, so... I think I need to be green lit, excited, motivated about something. And then when I am, I'm making the trip. Then you open your store. senses up. Then I'm like, my, mm. my senses are open. I'm now I'm excited mm. about something. And then it just becomes all of that. And like we were talking about before, like the A to Z starts to come into play where I'm just like, mm-hmm. really like, oh, like, okay, something's happening here. Let's like set back. Let's break it down. I need to go to the fabric store. I need to buy this. I need to do that. And all kind of like become something. But so it's not so much of like, you know, I guess one sense or the other or like how I learn it's just like it's almost like a light switch when something like mm. triggers me into like a big yes or a green light I'm just like I'm all ears I'm wide open I'm just like ready to go and if not mm. then I'm just kind of like plateauing and waiting like and conserving my energy until, like, the, <laughs> yeah. next, until the next big thing <laughs> totally. um, so I kind of work backwards yeah. to what you're cool. saying let's hear that yeah. because I feel like I'm like, if I'll find like a fabric or it could even be a prop or a clothing piece, Mm -hmm. then typically I'll build like a whole shoot or a whole concept around that piece rather than like, I actually find it, it can be quite challenging for me when a client comes to me and they're like, this is what we want to create exactly this. Mm. And then I'm trying to find everything to fit Mm. that thing. You're in a box now. Yeah. Mm. Versus them just being like. Go off of this shirt, totally. or go off yeah. of a piece this. of info. But it's nice to know. Yeah. it's nice to know how you operate because one becomes a chore and then one becomes a passion. Yes, and you know, and and for a creative, I think you need to be very aware of where you fall into that because if not, you don't want your passion to become a day of chores. You know, yeah, because that'll really you need to like, find what works for you. Totally, yeah, yeah. and communicate communicate that to your yeah. client or and have boundaries and, like, and have boundaries and just say like, you know what, like this is a cool idea, but it's mm-hmm. really just not for me, or I don't think I can I'm like make right that happen. Yeah, yeah. I'm, not, I'm not lit up about it. You know, like whatever, yeah, you know, like totally. You know, the first the other person who sat on that couch in the same spot who voiced it was Aaron, similar like that about dealing with clients oh. and when it's not a good fit, how to very tactfully pass them forward to someone who's a better fit you know what I mean and not just give them a hard no Mm -hmm. or you know or let them down being like hey this might not be the best fit so hearing you you say the same thing and it's true you know not every project and I think sometimes like like me I'm a bit of a fashion merc like that you know what I mean like I'll take it it's almost like mission impossible (laughs) I get like my mission orders it's like if you choose to accept this shit and I'm like Okay, I'm accepting oh, this shit. Sometimes yeah, yeah. I'm in that headspace right. too, and then I normally regret it later. Yeah, that's yeah. what I was going to yeah. say, right? Like, and that's when it becomes, like Paul just said, a chore. Yeah. 
Yeah. It becomes a hit almost. I mean, it's like, yeah, I got to yeah. take this out. And you know, I that's procrastinate what it is. and it takes oh. way longer to do it. No. And then I realized mm-hmm. that if I would have just, you know, kindfully declined mm-hmm. and then did a couple more things that I was actually lit up about, I yeah. probably would have done them quicker, better, more efficiently. And mm-hmm. your life would have you know? just been so mm-hmm. much more enjoyable. And, and you would have loved hey, it. And you don't get back yeah. Happiness is fucking yeah, health, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, that's the wealth of the health now. That's a hard lesson to learn because... There's no real like textbook for that, or there's no real like definition or terminology of like how to you know, you know, define your passion and how to like you know wh- which is because it's it's basically it's different for everyone. Yeah, your you process. Have, yeah, 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 yeah. So you have to kind of just you know. Mm-hmm. We're also we're in an industry though too where I mean wrapping around to some of the other topics we talked about, you know, a lot of people in our fields have gone to other cities, so the opportunities when you're coming up in the fashion industry. Are not as numerous as you'd like mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and so sometimes it is accepting that job that's, that's like true. fuck me mm-hmm. like this is going to be a chore but if but i'm going to eat do it but now right. but the thing is but yeah. like you guys said it's like finding that balance of but i gotta yeah. eat versus okay what am i compromising now just for money i and think it's like, easier to yeah. do when you know what it is yeah you know and you know what season it is because there's different seasons and if you're working your way up season for to, to to getting to a point where you can like pick and choose your jobs or your projects yeah. and you know that this is a stepping stone or you're like you know what i'm going to do this one and maybe I'm not going to be that lit up about it. I'm not going to be that pumped about it, but I'm going to grind for it and I'm going to do it. Yeah. But having that headspace and having that mentality going into it is different than you being like, oh, that's such a cool idea. I'd be like, I'd love to take that on <laughs> and fun. And then like a week later, you're like, I don't know why I said that. Like, I don't yeah. want to take that on, you know? Um, so I think it's being very aware of your creative process and what yes. you're lit up about and not because mm-hmm. then you can take on jobs and be like, you know what? this two weeks or this two months or whatever I'm putting into this is yeah. just going to be that and it is what it is and it's paying the bills yeah. and then you can get past it and you're, you're not you're not focused on like why am I so depressed why am I not oh my goodness doing this yeah. why am I waking I up in the morning with and, this so yeah. much yeah. Yeah. it's so, crazy yeah so I think that's that's uh, it's a tough it's a tough process yeah. but it's more about learning who you are yeah. opposed to learning like the job or the passion or the career yeah career. and that's been something for me too is I feel like I've gotten stuck in especially shifting from okay something I kind of just do for fun okay some people kind of throwing money mm-hmm. for little things mm-hmm. but not really paying for the whole yeah. situation that's and true. really getting yeah. actually paid for it totally. right yeah so shifting that into more of a career that's mm-hmm. something I can do full-time totally I was like okay I'm gonna be super professional I'm gonna add all these steps in that yep. makes sense to other people that don't work for me at all yeah. mm-hmm. and so that's been a huge learning curve mm-hmm. is like okay now I actually need to honor the way that I work best because yeah. that just means that it's gonna turn out better for the client so oh that's like yeah that's yeah. well said because that's funny as you're saying that I start thinking and I start thinking about my life for a second I look back and I'm like one of the questions that came to my head and I hear you guys saying I was like do you earn your right to say no or is it to jobs once you put in your work or would it have been smarter when I look back, if I had learned how to say no earlier and maybe compiled a I different body of yeah, a different yeah. body of work, but then it's like, but then would I have known how to say no if I hadn't gone through that's such a the catch shitty job? Right? Yeah, like, it's such a catch twenty two. Yeah. Like you can't be a revisionist. But when I look back, I'm like, holy shit, there's this fine line of earning the right to say no to jobs versus knowing when to say no to jobs without getting yourself into some bullshit. And I can say, looking yeah. back, that you know, is there jobs that now would I, of course I'd say no to them now. And would I tell my younger self, maybe you don't want to do this one, but yeah. then would I be that person to give that advice if I'd never went through it? I think that's so just, it's that fine yeah. line. You know what I mean? I think, I think that's just, you can chalk that up to yeah. growth. Yeah. Right? Like that's, that's the growth that's, though. Yeah. So you have that's to be uncomfortable. Yeah. That's growth. earning your stripes. Totally. That's what you're talking yeah, yeah. about, right? And I mean, I yeah. think that's a, p- a part of, you know, which growth is, um, self actualization, right? Mm. Where you can actually get to a point where you can look back and you can actually, realized like some of these things were perfect some weren't but all mm-hmm. those things are getting me to a point that i can actually realize what i love what i like to do and like yeah. the more you mm-hmm. can the more you can refine that mm-hmm. is all you can really do and really ask for but 
Man, when you're young, sometimes you just gotta grind. Sometimes you just gotta. You gotta go. take those lumps, man. Yeah. And sometimes you gotta. Sometimes you just gotta put say yes to everything. Yeah, you, know? you gotta put. Yourself I'm happy to say no to a lot of things yeah. now, especially now. But if I didn't say yes to yeah. a lot of things, I probably wouldn't be, be in, in that position, position to. That's to, what I mean, earn your right to so, say yeah. no. So I think there's something. You know I mean? it's, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, I know it because I feel like it's like both. It's like you earn your right to say no, but then when you look back at fuck, I should have said no to some of those. Yeah. Things. yeah. You know, yeah. Like, like, I already knew. Yeah, I knew. Knew inside that wasn't for me, or that wasn't like how you knew sewing wasn't for you. It's like okay, you were like no. Yeah, when it took me all day to do this little shit, and then yeah. I thought about like how would it, how much would it cost me to pay someone else to do that shit? Oh, I could have made that money in that time. <laughs> Fuck, man, that's <laughs> my role. That's my that. role. Yeah. yeah, doesn't that make it so much easier now in this time where you're at, like today, to yeah. say no to things? Like yeah. I can do it without guilt. I'm getting better. Yeah, we I'd like to help everybody, yeah. and that's one thing we do like to help. Right, I like to help, but I can say no without guilt. You know what? Like, He's I'm good at happy. saying no. Yeah. Paulie's the I better can see one. That. Yeah, Paulie's good at saying a hard no. Where me sometimes I'm kind of like, oh boy, and then Paul's like, no, I'm like, you're right, you're right. I'm like, you're why? I'm like, why even? Why yeah, even? yeah, I know. And I was yeah. like, it's just, not. it's just, it's tough. Yeah. Bleeding heart sometimes, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which actually is a great pivot because I was gonna. We talked about one of your top what you catered it as if we were looking at your portfolio. Yes. So speaking of the nose, can you think of something in hindsight? Mm. Fuck, I should have said no to. Like, is there something that really hops out to you that you like, fuck? Or like one that was like, instead sure. of the top, the, your notable bottom that you wish you had said. Yeah. yeah, yeah, a big miss in your in your styling oh. career. You don't have to throw no one on the bus like, fuck that brand. Yeah. You know, you don't yeah. say it like that. Totally. But is there any jobs it's you can like think? time or place yeah. or project or anything? Man, I'm trying to think of something. I'm like scanning through my... Man, I mean, you you made better decisions than me on shit yeah. thing because I had to come up with a couple. I'm like, shit. <laughs> I'm like, I think I got that in my notebook right here. Oh my yeah. gosh. Yeah, right. I'm like, off top. Oh. a list of all the shit. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah. I never I seen him like, take yeah. so many notes in my life. Yeah. I was like, like, shit, hey, I hated that I did in my past. <laughs> 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 Projects I think I wish like, I, yeah. I, I can't, I, yeah. yeah, I can't think of like any project in specific, yeah. but I would say more lifestyle okay. styling, mm. yeah. like not mm. as into it and still to this day. And like, that was another thing where I was like, oh, if I get more into, you know, styling for like personal wardrobe yeah. stuff or yeah. whatever, like sure. there's money to be made yes. in that or like that's applicable right. to yeah. a lot more people than maybe the like editorial stuff that I was doing for magazines where I'm like handcrafting like tops and matching bottoms, like glue gunning all these flowers yeah. onto it and mm -hmm. like cutting stuff up and pinning it that isn't actually like real life wearable mm -hmm. clothing. Totally. But that's more so that's of like costumes. where my passion, yeah, passion yeah, yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You're just looking so. for the shot. Yeah, like that's what the perfect shot. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and like with the set. Well, that's very much fashion sets. editorial that a lot of people yeah. don't necessarily get if they've not been on that side of the world. Because even in the You're fashion not even industry, considering ready to wear. No, it's not a nothing. Ready to wear it's not about being practical. Like, yeah, yeah. Like you said, it's about the aesthetic and, like you said, getting yeah. the shot, right? Yeah. Yeah. Which is fun, and that's that's just a different yeah. realm, right? Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. costuming. It that, is. That's yeah. the beautiful thing about like fashion when people find the line between costumes, like, Fashion industry includes it, but costuming is different than just fashion. Because costume, you get to be anything you want. There's no wrong answer if you put yeah. on a costume. True. It's whether is it well made and does it fit the vision. Mm -hmm. That's costume. Yeah. You know what I mean? Is and it aesthetically beautiful? Exactly. Is it? Did you get your shot? Did you hit the mark? Did you get your shot? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. Whereas, like, I mean, and just the term fashion industry is yeah. like people don't actually realize how broad of a term that is. Like, oh I mean, my gosh, there's little no. clothing and apparel, hundreds and the thousands. Same thing. We're all so different. Yeah, we're all very different. Yeah. but we all worked in stylists. Yeah, we all yeah. worked in production. We all work in fashion. So, and yeah. we're peers. We're all in fashion. Yeah, we're all peers. Mm -hmm. But yet, you see how different the hats we all wear totally yeah. are. We can I even mean, all say we work in styling yeah. alone, but all those three look very different. Very like different. What we do in and like even that term fashion industry or fashion stylist like it it stresses me out when I tell people that because I'm like I often can't come up with the right terminology for I guess what I love to do mm -hmm. because I, I think as soon as I say fashion stylist people are like oh my god you can come over and help me oh like god, yeah. get rid of everything in my closet See, that's and, like, what they don't and, I, and I'm yeah. just like Oh my gosh, I would rather yeah. just go um, like sort apples at the yeah, apple yeah, facility yeah, than yeah, do that. Yeah. Or like <laughs> just something that random, kind of you know? Nice, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. Um, yeah, they're, they're looking like someone to condense so their things. wardrobe. Totally. Yeah, yeah. Well, I tell I tell yeah. people like I like, you know, like I do fashion design. They're like, oh my god, I'd love for you to make me a dress. 
I'm like, do you know that like queens and kings and celebrities, like this is what they pay for yeah. people to do? Like that's how that so whole weird. industry yeah. started. Like literally before the 1940s, yeah, royalty. before mm -hmm. Coco Chanel, yeah. Christian Dior, or any, Saint fashion Laurent, houses. any, any mm -hmm. big fashion houses, before any of those names were names, yeah. there weren't names in fashion. There was servants and yeah. slaves making clothes for kings and queens. That's what that was. Yeah. That's what bespoke was. That's what that's you know, who like, set the style. That's who and set the style and, and standard. Then, and then you have like Coco Chanel. Then you have people that made name for themselves mm -hmm. after the 1940s, mm -hmm. and that grew into something bigger and something cooler. And that's Industry. how that's how fashion became fashion yeah. after the 40s, mm -hmm. after that whole yeah. era. Um, and until like celebrities and runways and red carpet, no one's actually making clothes for you or individuals they're yeah, just they're waiting they're, for themselves yeah they just make clothes they, they mass produce yeah. it like it's turning this whole I'm trying to think of any thing, society you know? in an ancient world but you're right so, they're all so so so, yeah. so when someone comes up to you and they're like oh i'd love for you to make me like a coat like i really need like a nice trench coat <laughs> i'm like do you know what you're asking yeah yeah i'm like literally like king louis the third and Kanye <laughs> west are the only two people that get this fucking privilege yeah. and it costs them like twenty thousand dollars each yeah. you know i'm like but you want some for 150 dollars yeah. and you want me to like you know like take the time to like style you and all this i'm like you don't even know what the fuck i do yeah I'm yeah. Like, you don't know what the fuck I do. Yeah. I don't want to explain it to you. And that's what I step in. And, and that's when I let Sean do that because I just stick to my my little station. So and you Sean's understand like, no, Paul's no, no, no. time is worth this much per yeah. hour, and for him to even look at this, <laughs> then I go into the spiel. Yeah. Because it's true. But once again, it's them understanding the process. Yeah. Of creation, now you're looking right? at like a 20, 30 hour project. Yeah. And if you have any self worth, you're talking about like probably in this industry maybe. Forty, fifty dollars at least at an amateur hour yeah. um, per hour. So it's like times that by thirty hours. It's like, who do you go, think you are? And who do that? Go to the bay. Go to the bay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah. It's that whole We've thing had a few of those yeah. conversations here because yeah. I think mm -hmm. when we do but alterations, repairs, and rework, mm -hmm. they come to Paul. And they know, like, yes, he can do anything that they're asking. And them we to do, do offer alterations yeah. and reworks and repairs, but it's like it's exactly what that is. You know? Yeah. When they go be above and beyond that, and it's just we're saying that to say basically that like there's a lot of misinterpretation of, of what like, the industry is, exactly. what, yeah. what, what fashion is, and it's hard to put yeah. a real name on what you do and what we yeah. do mm -hmm. because these days it's 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 very. Yeah. Create. evolving you know like it's become we're all creating our own paths you know yeah. you're wearing mm -hmm. three or four hats and you know like you're we're all we're all making it a whole different thing it's not just creative director it's not just seamstress it's not just yeah. designer it's not yeah. just like styling it's mm -hmm. so many different things now yeah so to actually like give yourself a title in this industry can can be pretty hard you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah it can be really restricting and yeah. you know and i think mm -hmm. that's it can be difficult too because yeah there's so much room there's people who in this industry the only thing they do is they do press releases for fashion brands or maybe they do fashion writing yeah technically you're just a writer or maybe they specialize in this you know what i mean and in some ways it was beautiful seeing how many opportunities there are for people who actually love the lifestyle and if you really love clothing apparel fashion lifestyle there's so many ways to get in the industry you know what i mean there's so many yeah. ways to be a part of it yeah you know what i mean beyond what is you don't common. just need to be a designer you, you know? don't and yeah. i had to learn that's what i had to learn because yeah. i thought you were when i was a low kid i'm starting to fucking sketch little things i'm like cool people like i was like just call myself fashion i didn't feel right because i know i don't sew or nothing mm -hmm. and i was like oh i can design things i can sketch i can do this but i'm not gonna sit here but i didn't i wasn't educated enough to know what it was that I do even, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. for me, it was a lot of learning um, practically first. And I practically learned a lot hustling, selling shit. I'd be selling shit out the trunk of my car, man. Shout out Triple C, man. Like you'd be out in the streets, Edmonton, doing hoodies, stuff, selling that shit, like drugs out the trunk, man. Like, and I was cool. But at the end of the day, it was like, I didn't know what I didn't know. You know what I mean? And then I learned how much there was more to this thing that I had already kind of fallen in love with, but yeah. had no clue what I was trying to marry myself into. And here we what are. What your lane was, right? Like, yeah. yeah. It's yeah. a big world, a lot of lanes. There's yeah. a lot of yeah. lanes. That's like, I had no idea when I was doing these shoots with my mom that a stylist was even a thing that right. existed. Totally. I had no clue. Yeah. And even like, you know, I would pull pages out of magazines, like all the cool editorial stuff or like cool campaign ads. Yeah. But I just didn't even think that, oh, there's someone there 
actually putting those outfits together yeah. or creating the whole vision for the set and totally. what the model's wearing and everything in between. Yeah. So, yeah, that was like crazy news to me when I found out that that was actually. Well, yeah, isn't it so funny career. that like. Yeah, isn't it amazing we have careers yeah. in this though too? Well, like, isn't it crazy like being, crazy. Being, yeah. being a creative individual or individuals, you know, like to know that that's an option, you literally have to find it out for yourself. Yeah. Like in, all Take that in our culture, yeah. because aside from like, you know, like in school, you have art, you know, but that's so narrow yeah. in terms of like and illustrative art and school. pants and all that. But like, you know, sorry, like painting and illustrative and like drawing, like that's what you learn in high school and junior high, you know, like there's art class, you know, but it's yeah. so narrow minded, you know, and then you over generalized. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah. Totally, yeah. Yeah. And, and then yeah. you, you have to kind of like, if you, if you're good at like photography or fashion, film, you know, acting, all that, you have to just like, really like, it's on you, you know, it's mm -hmm. on you to like, carve your own out, path, source yeah. it find out mm -hmm. that there's actually like pathways whether it be like formal schooling or just like you know just going mm -hmm. to you know intern or apprentice under someone whatever and, like works for you. whatever yeah. works you know yeah. but it's like there's no there's no real like textbook like hey this is how you do this which yeah makes sense because it's like a creative it has to be it's, it's right. so not yeah. regulated in a sense but it's not, traditional job but it's, but it's not that accessible yeah. why did like, you know that it was your path is this something that you've always been your dream or is this something that you um, more and more Saw was for you, was it? Yeah, it was just like, was, was did, did you ever take criminology or, or something else? And like, <laughs> no, or poli sci? Or like, or? Another kind of weird thing though is I had signed up to go to school to be an event planner. Mm, okay. And that would have been when I was 18, yeah. I think. Yeah. And it was like two days before the score, the course was supposed to start, and yeah. I dropped out and yeah. like lost a bunch of money, and I was just like, I can't do it. Yeah. Crazy. Like, I yeah. cannot. Yeah. I, I don't know. It's not right. You had one of those moments. It so. doesn't feel right. Yeah. Like yeah. it's kind of right, but it's not right. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's, that's when I was know. just like, I don't know what to do because all of my friends at that point were either like moving away to go to university or like starting school in town. So mm -hmm. I felt really like I needed to be doing something, and I think that's where that came from was like oh I'll just pick something that resonates the yeah. most right but it wasn't really the thing totally. so yeah after I stopped doing that I was like well I need to spend my extra time doing something so that's when the photo shoot started mm. and cool. yeah I forget the question that you asked me well but, I think I said you know. it's just more about was this something that you you'd been always feeling like this was your path right. or so was no, it something that you yeah. switched over like as like I said, for myself, I had originally, I sounds fucked up now, but I originally saw myself as going into law as a lawyer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so that was something I had been, you know, and I went to poly. I saw that too, actually. You know what I mean? And I was in poly sign on shit, and all of a sudden I started being like, eh. And it hit one of those same moments. I'm like, I can't do this. I can't do it. You know what I mean? And I had to drop out of university and like, sorry, mom, Aaron, I all this dirty laundry. I'm fucking fine here. But, but yo, the only time my mom ever been like, you know, had me fucked up. Like, she was like, what are you doing with your life? It was the time when I dropped out of university. And I dropped out the first time. I was like, I can't do this anymore. It's not me. She said, what are you going to do with your life? Shit, I don't know. I'm going to figure it out, though. Yeah. And I flipped out. You remember I flipped out on you. I was like, mom, either you have confidence that you taught me <laughs> smart enough to make the right decision or you didn't. So who are we betting on? I'm betting on you, mama. Now you need to bet on yourself. And she was like, fuck you, right? Like, oh so I was gosh. like, I'm like, hey, I, I think you did a good job. I'll, I'll make How proud decision. is your mom, yeah. you know? I've seen his mom. She's proud. Yeah. <laughs> She's the best. <laughs> but that's the thing is that, is that going through that and having that, like you said, having that sand in you to say, yo, this, just because this is the commonly um, walked road, this isn't the yeah. one for me and I'm not scared to jump off and try something new. And that's really was that moment when I split off and yeah. was like, I'm going to try my own shit. Well, that like loops back to that self-awareness, yeah. yep. like realizing yep. that something's not resonating. Yep. Totally. It's just like, oh, you can't yeah. keep no. just digging yourself in a hole. Isn't that mm -hmm. crazy? That's, that's the center of it all. Yeah. yeah. Really yeah. And, and, I mean, totally. and, there's, right? and, and then you, you can go so long half-assing a couple different things yeah. and until you actually like drop what you don't doesn't sit well with you and you just go full force Cause you'll eventually have to you have to you'll hit your breaking yeah. point yeah ideally you do yeah so, and then so like it's either you choose to or it or it, or it, or it, or it catches up to you you know but yeah. but if you do do it then you finally have the opportunity to like 
fulfill your full potential because you've dropped all the rest of the baggage or all like the half-assed no's, you know? I'm so happy you said that because one of the things that scared me the most, and this was actually the reason why, like I was, you know, I had a, my first brand and stuff when I was in my like early 20s and like, you know what I mean? I was doing the hustle. Yeah, exactly. Well, hustling, baby. Man. Yeah, we got dudes out in Edmonton still the tattoos, do everything, man. Like that's for life shit. But my point being is like, I was doing that, but the thing that scared me the most, you know, and I've seen some people doing like, say, if you don't drop the nose, you don't drop these things and you're just half-assing it. And then all of a sudden you use up your prime years and all of a sudden you get to a point where you never jumped in fully. That's scary. That scared me. And I, I don't mean to be too dark, but one of the things that scared me in fashion was ever thinking I, I'd half-ass it and treat it like a hobby, thinking I was treating it like a career. Mm -hmm. And then get to a point where you've lost touch and you can never get yourself back in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like being too far over, how, how do I put it? It's like you never committed enough to get yourself good enough to actually make it a viable career. Exactly. Yeah. And so you yeah. and so that was the thing that scared me and that's what made me it's jump in and go yeah. into marketing mm -hmm. for it. Because I realized like, if I don't do something, it's just a fucking glorified hobby. And that was at the point I was at. And it's crazy to look back and think like, man, those decisions and you know, if I had kept half-assing it, where would I be? Mm -hmm. We wouldn't be here, you know what I mean? And where would you be if you didn't take that, that, that jump and move to Sweden to actually go and intern? Like, that's totally. a big-ass fucking step. Or for you, like mm -hmm. you said, dropping out, you know what I mean? Or starting on saying no before you're about to go yeah. into college. Like, imagine you had, didn't have a, you know what I mean? The fucking and, sand and, and you yeah. just make that call. Where would and you And now be? you're not working full-time at Earl's, which is something yeah. you would have probably be hating right now. You yeah, know, yeah. Like, crazy. It's crazy, the forks yeah. in the road, huh? Yeah. Especially in this industry. It's just, mm -hmm. it's a it's a tough one. Yeah, it's like all those little decisions are just so important to yeah. the grand scheme of everything. Totally. And I still have those moments where oh. I think about, um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's like, I don't know, something will hit and I'll just be like, whoa, is this actually the right path? Because like, I don't want to have any regrets. You're trying to discern and I think, the way forward. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of like, yeah, that's a big thing for me is never having any regrets. That's maybe a little bit unrealistic, but that's like, that's the goal, right? Like with every decision that I make is like, am I, like, why am I choosing to not do this? Or why am I choosing to do this? Like, is it for the right reasons? Great approach though. Yeah. yeah. I think that's a, that's a, that's a pretty solid question. That's what I question. for. Yeah. It's a pretty solid question you ask yourself in yeah. any, because I don't think, I think sometimes when you get to these like points of like, you know, what am I doing with my life, blah, 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 you, um, have to make these big decisions sometimes that really like is a fork in the road or mm -hmm. you know you really have to make these big hard no's or big hard yeses but after that it's just checking yourself daily you know like once yeah. you get, once you get to this point yeah. where you're like pretty happy with where you're at then mm -hmm. it's just like you know it's almost like more of an upkeep and a maintenance yeah. thing mm -hmm. where you're just like yo is this a big yes for me mm -hmm. is this a big no or like mm -hmm. why am i saying yes why am i saying no yeah. kind of thing and then mm -hmm. you know then it's just kind of more of like quick little like yeah, yeah. cool no no. And that's another and then, thing too though, yeah. like staying too stagnant and too comfortable. Mm. Totally. And I think that's something that I've been, I've done a little bit too living in Kelowna. Like I'll be like, oh, like this is kind of good mm. enough for here. Or mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. this is cool enough for yeah. Kelowna. Yeah. Like not to talk down Kelowna no, at all, no. but like yeah, no, yeah. But of course, you're not as challenged about, yeah. perhaps. That's your, that's your personal, you say comfort zone. It could be anything. Yeah. 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 In the place. So yeah. I think it's like checking yourself in that department totally. is important too. Well, I think that's, and I think that's crucial. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, and I think creatively that's a big deal because yeah. I think you have to keep like questioning yourself and keep pushing yourself and, yeah. like, and stepping outside your comfort zone and your yeah. boundaries and stuff like that. But I think that's more on a creative scale. Cause some people are very good at just like staying in a lane, staying in a comfort zone and yeah. you know, different people have different, you know, different roles in society, you know, and some people are very happy to be that, but, in a creative world, I think that's, you know, that's, that's a death wish, you know, like to just like be stagnant. Yeah. It it's depends interesting. What makes you oh, no, I think yeah. I completely, no, I agree with you hundred percent. And I just wonder if it even is just a creative world thing. Mm -hmm. Because like, I'll be honest, one of the best piece of advice I ever got when I was a kid from one of my bosses, he said, Sean, I'll never forget it, Sean, I was in a little fucking part-time ass job. He was like, Sean, don't ever get, and I guess once again, we talk about moderation, don't ever get too comfortable. And he's like, don't ever find yourself in a comfort zone. And, and it scared the shit out of me because he was like, I was working part time here. And I was like, uh huh. And he's like, full timer, like, like for now. He's like, I was working part time here. 
and then the kid, my girlfriend pregnant, now we got five kids, I can't do anything else, I have to pay, and I was just like, oh my god, and I just seen the horror of his life, and I just saw it, and I was like, you got yeah. to a comfort zone, you started making just enough money to handle the situation, and yeah. you figured that was enough going forward, and now you're locked in, because you can't take the risk going elsewhere, because now you got to, so <gasps> and it scared me shitless, and I'm going to tell you, I was like 21 years old, and like, that stuck with me for the rest, like the yeah. whole thing of comfort zones. Like, I'm so uncomfortable in comfort zones. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm comfortable being uncomfortable. But That's again, my comfort yeah. zone. You know but, what I'm but, saying? But I think that is personalities. I think yeah. that is different for different people. Also considering about like, being too comfortable. Totally. Too. That's yeah. thing. Like I just like when you say that, like that that brings me to like you know and and bless her heart. I love my sister, mm. um, who, you know, she has like now like she's two years older than I am, but mm. she has four kids, mm. and her world changed into a very comfortable house mom mm. world, but man, she's the happiest person I know, you know? Like so is she happy or comfortable? Both. See, that's the thing is, I guess when sometimes people are comfortable, <laughs> but not happy. Yeah, yeah. So I that's think what that's I think the thing, see, is the happiness totally. portion So I think different, like, I, yeah, I, I, I see I would, what you're saying, that's what I'm saying, be, it's a curious... I would be mm -hmm. not be happy being comfortable, and I think I would that's become very, you know, like, but I see her, and she has a very, like, streamlined, mm -hmm. you know, this is her life, and she's not really looking to, like, go past it or out of it or any of that, mm -hmm. but she's the happiest mom I ever yeah, that's all she wants to accomplish but maybe, maybe that yeah, was her, her maybe, you know yeah. what, maybe that was her destiny yeah. in her life, is to raise four young kids, mm -hmm. that maybe some of them have these, like, crazy futures or whatever, mm -hmm. like, yeah. uh, maybe that was her role yep. in this universe, yeah. and that was her thing. That's why she can find happiness. And she's so yeah. happy, like, she's yeah. so happy, and mm -hmm. I think about her life, and translate it to mine, I was like, I can't imagine having four kids. I can't imagine being yeah. stuck. I can't imagine not being able to do the things I want to do. Yeah. But that's me, mm. you know? Yeah. And then I look at my sister, mm. and she's like, oh, my bros, like, travel the world, and he's doing his thing in Kelowna, and hoping his shop's so happy for him. Yeah. And she's just, like, sitting back and watching, and she's just like, she has no regrets. She yeah. has no, in See, that, in, in that world, yeah. you know? Because she's a happy mama, and that's what she wants to do. And her having four kids, like, she could have after, like, you know, you know, let's say she had two accidental kids or something that she could have like called it quits or whatever but now she's happy like yeah. she wants a big family like this is her dream you know that's that's so, her if you, if totally, you nailed it on the head totally you yeah, said that's yeah. her dream so that's what so comfortable yeah. is different to different people yeah, yeah, yeah. and happiness is happy is different to or are you comfortable yeah. that you haven't achieved your dreams but you're comfortable in the meantime yeah, or are you comfortable yeah. on the process to it totally. and, and that's where it becomes though but you said the regrets and you mm -hmm. said that she has no regrets mm -hmm. to me i think I want to speak for self. It's about it's exactly. like regrets and happiness. Yeah. That's all I could say. And you know, the scariest thing is being able to have knowing you have regrets, you can't change it. Mm -hmm. You know yeah. what I mean? And so for me, falling into a comfort, yeah, Terrifying. falling into a yeah. comfort zone yeah. and not achieving my dreams would be something that I would regret forever. And I think I bundled those in together. Mm -hmm. When you start to unpack them, it's like yeah. okay, you could be comfortable if you're on the road to accomplishing your dreams. Yeah. Totally. I'm still yeah. quite, like, like whenever we get a little too comfortable, I'm still kind of like being like, Dude, I've been comfortable in so long. I feel, man, this, this COVID year has been crazy, dog. So we actually, and you're going to know who this one's from just by the wording of the question. Okay. Shout out to the homies at, um, oh, we don't got the glasses up here. Shout out to the homies at Okanagan Lifestyle. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I have a question here. It says, Wolfette, what do you love about living the Okanagan Lifestyle? Everything they would, yeah, they would. <laughs> yeah. He branded the question, uh, he, he branded even. the question. You guys are so good at branding. Is there like a TM at the back yeah, of the yeah, like, like, Can I say that without getting sued? Oh my god, what do you love, Wolfette, about the Okanagan lifestyle? Or icon symbol. Everything. Everything. <laughs> I don't like the snow one. Actually, I do very momentarily at Christmas time. Yeah. 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 For a couple um, days. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you all have a beach life. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like the sun yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and the wave one. What is it that keeps you here? What is it that... What do you uh, love about this? Love about yeah. Um, we get comfortable. <laughs> it's really, it's just like a grounds for flourishing for me. Like it has all of the right elements to be able to thrive. Like I feel really grounded here. I don't feel too overwhelmed. I can be up in the mountains. I can go to the lake. I can go to the beach. Um, all within about mm. 10, 15 minutes if I want to. And I can, or yeah, I can immerse myself in nature, which is so important, I think, to be able to do what it is that I 
needs to do, like, that need to do. like yeah. in order for me to create from a place that's actually authentic and um to create something good i guess in my eyes like i need to be really grounded and i need to be surrounded by great people and it's like all of the elements need to be <laughs> lining up if that makes sense so cologne is just that place for me yeah. for whatever reason yeah yeah for so many reasons if you were to ask like you know like is is it is it too even far of a reach to say like what is a day in the life of look with you or is it mm -hmm. so different all the time or do you have like your routines it's like, actually not about, is there something routine? about like yeah, yeah is there something yeah. about like, cologne that you kind what's of like, the routine right now what, what's the yeah. look like you know? uh routine is well pre the gym's closing mm -hmm. um go to orange mm -hmm. fitness pretty much every morning okay. or yoga yeah. that's actually a recent routine of mine that hasn't always been a thing but it's something i was loving so i'm pretty bummed about yeah. the closures but um yeah like get up get some movement some exercise in and then i'll basically like hop onto my laptop at home music blasting hopefully some sunshine coming in through the windows blasting yeah. like we're talking like my music is loud really? yeah do you live in an apartment or home house i live in a house you doing the yard work with the landlord yeah, yeah, yeah. that wasn't on the podcast so it was yeah. in between but yeah, yeah. Shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it is now. <laughs> it is now. Yeah. Um, okay. Blast the music, laptop yeah. out. Yeah, like heavy bass, like really loud mm -hmm. music. Yeah. Mm. Midday. And then I'll normally pop over to Chai Bubba if it's spring or summer, biking or skateboarding pretty much every day. Mm -hmm. okay. Like love cruising over there on the Chai bike Bubba's path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then I'll normally like chill outside for a little while. People think, thought that I worked there for so long. Mm. People still think that I work there Chai because Bubba? I'm always there. No way. That's Just fine. like sitting out I'm fried I, always. I, live in like, I lived in like the apartments right above. I've uh, never, actually, that's not true. I I did see you that one day yeah, about two weeks light. ago. He's a clone socialite. Do you remember this? I was I thought, on my skateboard. I saw you, but I was like, oh, no, okay, see, or maybe we did. I don't think I didn't think that you waved at me, but we hadn't met yet, and I was like, I think that's that Paul dude. But yeah, anyways, no, uh, no. <laughs> it was like an awkward like I, I thought I waved and then you didn't see me and then you saw me after. Oh but I do shit! Remember that. Yeah, and then um, I saw you like two hours later over here on the right. street again outside yeah. of Naked Cafe. Yeah. yeah. Social lighting all over the town, Polly. Oh, Kelowna. Yeah. 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 But anyways, yeah. you're oh, saying yeah. you work at Chai Baba. No, I don't work at Chai Baba. I know. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> are you serious? I feel like, are you listening to anything I just said? Yeah. Jeez. <laughs> no. Well, I've yeah. heard you after three drinks. <laughs> You get spicy. You get spicy yeah. about it. Yeah. I mean, my favorite daily routine is like exercise, laptop work, and then I get out for like fun exercise, which is bike riding or skateboarding. Okay. And yeah. then, yeah, I don't know, just like working for my phone, meetings, pop over to wherever, right and then. It's quite the Okanagan lifestyle. Uh, that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's good. And then, like, other than days like, where I'll have installations or actually like be yeah. on site, but those days time, aren't. Right? Yeah. There's yeah. not many not of those. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, there's like so much lead up that has to go into yeah. Yeah. actually. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah. That's more like, like yeah. 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 And like, I don't feel like I have as much of those anymore because mm -hmm. with like with events specifically, which what I was focusing on for the last two years, yeah. those are like intensive days. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's totally. Being there at 8 a.m. until and I obviously mean, with the current climate, there's not too many events going on. Right yeah, now. you were kind of saying you, you actually enjoyed. You enjoyed. Well, you like before during the break, you were saying you kind of enjoyed the break of not doing so many events because mm. yeah. you were like so full on fire yeah. like COVID. So it's yeah, kind of a, a blessing in disguise, I guess. Totally, and like with dipping into the interior design realm and mm. is that how you kind of pivoted your business in this time you kind of yeah. went into your design and yeah okay it's always mm. another avenue that i've wanted mm. to get into mm. i heard i heard there's some and upcoming uh upcoming projects or launches coming out i don't know if that's something yeah. you can talk on or touch on yeah. yet or um, if that's too too early to talk about yeah, so it's got ear to the ground man jeez <laughs> fuck <laughs> Club? Do you keep it on Clubhouse oh, or something? Do you keep it on Clubhouse? Oh I'm not invited on Clubhouse. What? Because I got a Samsung. Oh, yet? No, I'm on Samsung. Can't do it. Oh. Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. I know. Uh, social uh, socialite life is not for me, though. Yeah. I mean, I, I have a regret about my phone choice. It's actually really weird. I'm kind of over it already. I'm kind of over it already. Yeah, it's yeah. good. Um, regret removed. But uh, is that something you can elaborate um, on? Yeah. Like, I mean, interior design realm, that's super fresh for me with, oh. within the last year. So I am really excited about that. There's a number of projects that are kind of in the works, but I don't really want to say what they are because yeah. just in case, no. you know? Yeah. No. Yeah. So we'll hold off on those. But um, I am going to be releasing officially my rental website mm. for events okay, and prop rentals. Can you tell us what it is and maybe we can get it well, on the screen? Is. But what's the, that's what it I know is. about the address of the rental. Oh, uh, like it'll, the website. it'll, it'll be, be uh, wolfetevents.com, uh, uh, but that'll yeah. be the site. Wolfetevents.com, yeah. yes. folks. There we go. Yes. yes. We're going to put that right here. Jordan hates when I do that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's just been something that's been so long in the works yeah. for me. Like, totally. people who know me will hit me up and be like, oh, we're looking for, like, this cool thing or this yeah. cool thing. And it's just never been set up in a way that people can come and look at stuff or they can see the inventory that I carry. So I like condense it, streamline it, and be like, this is that. Yeah. 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 yeah, and, like, to expand off of that as well. Totally. There's so many things that oh. I love to bring in and customized pieces that we can create mm -hmm. and then rent them out for people so you don't have to hire me to style like a whole event per se because yeah. that's not really within reach for everyone oh. so for some people to still Entry be able level to like yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 like rent yeah. like, it's a like the model is just like good hire me just rent my shit yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 i can be the whole you know, so i don't have to yeah stop hiring i don't have to bullshit. give you a hard no i can give you an option yeah, right. yeah. right so give you a soft yes yeah 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 exactly so yeah, access to my tickle trunk of mm -hmm. props mm -hmm. and yes. decor. Yes. The oh. troll house tickle trunk. The troll yeah. house. <laughs> okay. Love it, love it. Damn. Okay, you know what wouldn't yeah. be an episode if I didn't sneak this quick question in, yo. I know you didn't she, do it. I know I had to. I know. Yo, do you ever? Yeah, I'm trying. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, no, no. First off, you're not controversial. Yeah. I know, you don't get too long. So, you ever had beef with another stylist or anything? Or like interior decorator or anything like anyone in the industry. Or anyone in Kelowna. He just wants to know if you got beef. I know you don't eat meat, but yeah, yeah. actually, I knew it. I knew it. Huh? <laughs> yes, yes. So time it is, huh? There's this woman, and that's my yes. I'm I'm here for all of this. Her name's Jorn. <sighs> we got names. Yes. Like and... I'm so locked in. I'm so locked in. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah. And her last name is Wolf. You don't feel like you're playing with me now. <laughs> and she's my grandma. You got beef with your grandma though? Damn! And she's an interior designer. Wow. This is juicier than I could have thought. <laughs> Imagine I had to ask this question. It's gonna get rich. She's trying to steal my jobs. What? Yeah. Grandma? Yeah. She ma? No, just kidding. I could have done that a little better, maybe. <laughs> you could have kept it going. Cause now I'm like, I'm like thinking about like, this like family trauma. I was so, like, I was like wow, I'm like, man. I'm like, fuck. grandma got to go, bro. Christmas must be <laughs> crazy <laughs> around that whole spot. No, grandma's the, know grandma's make the OG. Yeah. <laughs> that was like, I'm stealing grandma's interior design now. Grandma's got beef with you. <laughs> not to us. Yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. have to have my grandma on the podcast. I That's think so. I think oh my so. gosh. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The OG we'll will fat. Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She has the best no. answer. Yeah. That's all She's good. Like That's all good. Not really, not really. Not <laughs> really. I mean, I don't think so. You know what? I always I ask mean, if you all think I'm being asked some questions. I'm not going to lie. Not I've had really. beef with other stylists. Yeah. I, I don't even know any other stylists uh -huh. in Kelowna. I see him in Nordstrom. They better not get in the elevator with me. You people. know who you are if you're watching this. Don't get in the elevator with me. I'm just saying, this shit happens in the industry, you know? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah, mm. maybe with like certain makeup artists and stuff where yeah. it hasn't really like, yeah. you know, you work with them for the first time and they don't understand because we live in yeah. Kelowna, like what a creative director is yeah. and that we're like working on a team. So yeah. they're like, I'm doing the makeup like this because this is what I want to do. And I'm like, yeah, dude, but this fucking outfit is this. Yeah, so, like, that doesn't yeah. match. And you know what? You know the saying. I have to say that. And then they don't like me because no. I have to be the one to that's say it. That's just tossing up. Yeah, but yeah. you know what? There's, feeling, there's so. no feelings in fashion. That's what I, that was one of the first things I learned no. in school. There's yeah. no feelings in fashion. <laughs> I had teachers that would relish making you cry. They made me cry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they made some people cry. 
And people, I've seen people that draw out that shit because they got so miserable for them. They're just like, they're like, why are you here? Why are you even in fashion? Well, obviously your heart's not here. I don't care about it. You ain't fit for it. Why are you crying? There's no feelings in my like, Whoa. And people fold, man. So like, yeah, I was always, I came from that school of like, put your feelings away, get the job done, yeah. especially on set. You know what I mean? And it's crazy. Sometimes you rub people wrong with that attitude and I know, you know what I mean? And there's been some bumping heads. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I, I always ask that. I think it's funny on people's different industries to yeah. see what the answers are. Yeah. But that shit's real. <laughs> yeah, oh, for, like, yeah, yeah, for we sure. We were just hoping, for like, sure. we assumed you didn't have for any sure. of anyone, but it was oh just my been, God. Oh, my God, you blew me away when you said... I'm, like, throwing the name I was like, I'm like, like, she's yo, dropping me. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear she's it. dropping me. What is it? I knew it. I knew we were waiting for you to set for this shit. Who it is. And then you're like, oh, man. No. That's juicy stuff. That's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe next time. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll think on it. <laughs> you never know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. I'm, can I can I ask questions? Powers, Powers got it. We got it. Oh, we got, got a, question a question from the producer. Let's hear it. Yeah, I've I've known you for a long time, and I've I've, I've never known where the troll, the troll thing comes from. Oh. What's what's the whole troll? Is that the troll? Tri- the tickle trunk? The trilogy. The troll, the troll trilogy. trilogy. There's too many T's. I'm about to trip There's over this t- shit. Yeah. Terminology here in terms of trolling. Yeah, so can you do a little background, like why you refer to yourself as a troll? Oh, so then you're talking about yourself. Yeah, the, yeah well, the I yeah. kind of. Don't I mean, me. I mean, the troll house is how it started. Okay. Explain. And this is a thing like, just from back in high school, I guess it just like my house became the troll house, <laughs> and it probably started out with like, because I'm really into like '90s kids toys, like Furbies, My Little Ponies, okay, and okay. like and troll dolls. And troll dolls. Yeah. I think trolls are like. Yeah, trolls, I definitely say. Smart. I'd say My Little Pony by the eighties. Okay. Because I'm, I was born in the eighties, and them things the girls were yeah, going crazy. Yeah, My Little Ponies have. But yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's like He Man and My Little Pony. Ones? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but anyways, all those cool it. little yeah. like retro toys. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've just always really been into that shit and okay. Hello Kitty. Yeah. And so for some reason, trolls just stuck, and then it became this thing with my group of friends and I that it's like oh, the troll house, we're going to the troll house. And I would host a lot of parties in high school. And then, and like just hilarious shit would just be going down at my house. Like I grew up on an orchard and my mom had no rules for us. And there was go-karts and quads and like, Bouncy just castles? whatever Bouncy was going castles. on, like so many stories in that realm, in that department. So then from there it became Trollette. Oh. And then my mom became Mama Troll, and oh. then there's Brother Troll. Damn. And Mama then there would troll. be like Boyfriend Troll if oh. I was dating someone. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Mr. Trollette. So, yeah. Yeah. Mr. Yeah, Trollette. Yeah. 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 Mr. Trollette. Perfect. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but no. Um, but anyway, so that's where the troll thing originated from. And then I started collecting trolls because I just think they're so damn cute. And. <laughs> So I started making like Thank troll yeah. shrines mm-hmm. and then like, yeah, just as you do different para- yeah. troll yeah. paraphernalia. Yeah, we'll go crazy with trolls. And that's cool. So that's... you still got the collection? You still got the oh, shrines? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that Pretty shit much. might be worth some now. No doubt, yeah. Well, depending on what condition you kept it in. <laughs> Sounds like you had fun with your trolls. I, I hot glue gunned like 30 of them yeah. together yeah. on the yeah. wall. So like, those aren't worth shit. Those ones. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I've got, yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna nerd so out. So that's where the troll yeah. Lots of cool house troll came stuff. from. Okay. Yeah. Is that was that the essence of your question? Where troll came from? Yeah. Tro- so trollette. now yeah. it's like, so my family home was the troll house, mm. and now speed up to today, like with yeah. the house that I live in, it's just like it's very similar yeah. to the farmhouse that I grew up in. It's like a heritage home and. There's lots of different rooms and facets, Trolls and my bedroom is upstairs in this cool loft area. Yeah. Cool. So it's it's kind of freaky actually how much it's replicated. Yeah, it resembles that. Yeah, 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 resembles that. So now it's become like the Troll House 2.0. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we've started like tagging on Instagram anytime there's like shoots or music videos happening at my house, whatever. We'll tag the Troll House. Troll House. And yeah. I've been trying to get the Instagram handle. From so the guy it? who has the troll How house. How much is he trying to charge you? He said he was so just there... going to give it to me, and now he's not responding. Because you know what? He probably looked so into you. So there is beef. <laughs> yeah. 
We just had to get yeah, down to it. We just had to get down to it. Closed mouths okay. don't get fed. If okay. I wanna, you gotta dig in that Handle shit, at Troll House. We're coming. Man, give for it a you. fucking handle, at dog. What do you even want it for? It for? Shit's weird, man. Do you hear That's a weird trolls? flex, bro. If you got more fucking experience with trolls, I don't Give her at Troll House, man. Wow, like, what's, what the fuck you need that for? Weirdo? Guys, it's such a bummer. There's no posts on it or anything. We're gonna hit him up. Did anyone get trollhouse.com yet? Dude, we're gonna hit. No. We're gonna. The uh, troll house. Let's get everyone. Let's get everyone we know to send them a message on the DMs and be like, "Yo, man, give it up. Shit's over, man. Like, we yes. need troll house." Yeah, I'm gonna. You know what yeah. I'm gonna do? There's a bigger. I'm gonna, a bigger I'm gonna message. report him. I'm yeah. gonna report him to IG. And get that shit done. We're gonna, <laughs> gonna do inappropriate we're shit. Gonna get it. I'm just gonna get it removed. I knew there was and beef. Then you could jump on it. I knew there was beef. Yeah. Yeah. We're There's make always it. beef and somewhere. So this kind of like leads into. Yes. Keep going. Like. Mm-hmm. future visions that I have too. Please. I'm like, I just feel like I need to keep the troll brand alive yes. because so house like, productions. it's your thing now. Yeah. It's like currently my house because my house is also like my prop storage yes. and stuff. Mm-hmm. Troll house as rentals. As of right now. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get all these dot coms. Oh my God. <laughs> troll house rentals, troll house productions, troll yeah. house, troll house one, troll house so 2.0. One, at some point there'll be like a troll house warehouse. Yeah. Troll, troll house, house warehouse. You should have told me that. I'm going to get that one like, too. Oh my God. Troll house warehouse.com, troll house warehouse.ca. Don't worry, y'all. You just holler at me. I'll sell, <laughs> I'll sell the bundle to you for a great price. <laughs> the bundle. Yeah. I'm getting yeah. more. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to GoDaddy as soon as they're all this shit. I'm yeah. taking it all. Unless that no. fucker already has it. Did you yeah. check make sure he don't have it? He's fucking with you. Well, I don't know. He's not using the account for anything. So exactly. it mustn't He's be trying that to make money. To him. He's yes. trying to make money. No, he was going to give it to me. He was a chill dude. And, and then, then, he, and then changed? he I don't know. He's just like lazy and just doesn't want to like out. do He's in a comfort zone, to... isn't he? Mm. Yeah. yeah. See what it does? <laughs> <laughs> Most dangerous. We're going to find some dirt on him. It's blackmail. Yeah. So that's the troll wow, thing. Wow, great question. Yeah. Yeah. Great question. Yeah. Um, any, yeah. any last uh, you know was, Instagram uh, questions? <laughs> we do have a special one for you that we've been holding up our sleeve. Mm. You know what? I'm going to let you ask this. <laughs> I'm asking all the questions. I'm going to just step aside on this you. one. That's not right for me to hog all the questions. Sorry, Paul. Next one's on you, dog. Shit. No one asked this that one. Referencing the paper. <laughs> it's that one. I really don't want to. I, I'm sorry about that up. Um, <laughs> now you are. Okay. I know we usually anonymously say it, but this one's not going to be anonymous. Um, <laughs> young Shrub. What's it? Shout out slash not shout out. Um, <laughs> Hashtag not a real shout out. Yeah, yeah. She, she wanted to ask you, have you ever peed your pants in public? Kristen. Hey man, we're just asking Kristen. the question you guys said. Yeah. So I don't know if this is an inside scoop or like, we some, like inside joke. Because I'm like, what kind of question is this? But I feel like you guys are friends. Yes. Yeah. So, so yeah. there's got to be something to this. <laughs> oh man, young shrub, Kristen young and I. So young. Recently. Oh, this is recent. Well, yeah. Since she's come back into town, we've just had some really hilarious adventures. Yeah. And. Kristen, <laughs> not myself. I will say I'll be honest with the viewers. Please do. Please do. <laughs> That's all we can ask. I'm hanging on every word. Has right a problem. Well, she says she has. I don't know. I don't know if it's actually a problem. I think she might be lying. Anything in this realm sounds like a problem. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited for what you're about to say. <laughs> she'll pee her pants if she laughs too hard. And like every time we get together, we're like crying, laughing. So it's like an issue. You like try not to take, tell too many jokes. And she's just like, stop, stop right now. Like you can't, you can't keep doing this because I'm gonna pee in your car. Like as we're driving. I'm pee in my so is the question car. has she peed in public? Is that the real? Well, it's funny that she yes. asked the question yes. because she knew how this would turn on her. No, that's what I tell you. Sorry. Yes. You know most people, she people who like me. accuse. If you know you're in a relationship and someone's accusing you of cheating, a lot of times they're cheating. So what I'm saying is only you that you pee your pants in public, guess what? I'm guessing they probably peed their pants in public. That's just crazy she asked if you ever peed your pants in public because she knew how that would turn around to be like, girl, you Fuck. pee your pants in public. So maybe she wants people to know about it. Oh, it's pretty funny. Like, like it just makes yeah. whatever you're doing that just, much funnier. You know what? If you're like, oh shit. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah. Well, I just feel bad because she's probably literally peeing her pants laughing. <laughs> no. Yeah. Oh shit. 
Going back to dog. This is probably way too funny for her. Dog. And she's like, oh no, I'm wearing pants. You know, like, she's like, it's not, she's like, <laughs> Like disclaimer. Yeah, right? she was me right now. She's probably Peter Pan. I'm not. Okay. Well, I mean, I wouldn't go that hard on this, aside from the fact yeah. that she asked the question. So. That was it. That was the yeah. last yeah. question. Yeah, yeah, real good. Um, you answered it. You're a champ. We yeah. weren't sure if you were going to answer that one. Like, I know. I thought that might have been a touchy that subject. Was, yeah. No. Like, yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. no. Just funny. Just that was the heat Funny shit right going there. down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. That's pretty good. Adventures. I think, I think, I think. On that one, I don't even know where to go after that. Might be a good time to wrap it up. But um, what I was going to say to you folks out there, if you guys enjoyed this, you know what it is. You guys hit that subscribe button on YouTube. Follow mm -hmm. us on Spotify. If you're on Google, you know, you keep I, checking us out. Baby. I know there's a couple places we can find you, but mm -hmm. is there a couple those. handles or a couple websites we might be able to look you up on? Yeah, all Instagram right now. Mm -hmm. So Wolf at Events, Wolf at Styling for Fashion. And Wolf at Design for interior design stuff. And we'll soon Troll There's House. Three. Yeah. And soon at Troll House too. We're taking yeah. your shit, dude. At the Troll House. At the, the Troll, Troll House. Troll house. Yes. We'll get them all. Wolf yeah. Fett's taking over the world. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Ciao, guys. Thanks Thank for tuning so in. Thank, Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much. You've been such a wonderful yeah. guest. It's Thank been a pleasure, yeah. right? Yeah. And the tulips. Oh, my God. Those are tulips, right? Yeah. Yeah. Nailed it. Nailed it. Good job. Nailed it. Good job. Good job.